What is going on, everyone? Welcome to Rad Company, Season 3, Episode 2. And man, I have a special one tonight. One that I've been wanting to do since Rad Company became a thing, where I was bringing people on uh, from YouTube or other social media uh, networks. And uh, people that I've watched or I'm currently watching that I think needs to be exposed to the people that watch my show and just people that I definitely wanted to chat with and kind of dig a little bit deeper and learn more about. And, you know, that's definitely something that I want to do tonight with our guest. And guys, you know who it is. Um, It's an OG in the YouTube space. And we're going to get into all that because, again, he's somebody that I've been watching forever, like one of the two or three YouTubers that I've been watching since... I started watching YouTube when it came to physical media, movies, learning about titles that maybe I never heard of before. Like this was somebody that I was watching to get ideas of like movies that I needed to check out. So before we bring this guy in, I'm going to go to the chat, see who is here. And again, obviously, thank you guys for jumping in and checking this out live. So We're going to pop to the top. We got, as always, coming in, Adrian James. What is going on? Thanks, man. Pat Master, what is going on? Welcome. Fozzy, what is going on, Fonzie? What's up? Says, what's up to Brendan? So he knows Brendan's on his way, and everybody's getting excited for Brendan. All right, Ken Carlson, what's going on? Rob Romano, what is up? Joe Bob. How are you doing, Blu-ray Attic? Glad you can make it. I saw you pop in last night towards the end, so glad you're here. Kevin L., what's going on? Jason Werner, what's going on? The View with Drew is in the house. Luis, what's going on? Welcome to the show. Waldo, yeah, this is this is very interesting. Um, same generation, I think, as far as age, but different generations when it when it comes to YouTube. So very interesting, and it'll be cool to kind of talk about things that are going on now versus how things were uh, when he started. Tomato Vision Rage. What's up, man? Brandon in the house. Horror Collector 87. It is going to be rad indeed. Artificial flavor. What is going on? Spicy 4K action. What up? Welcome to the show. And movie fan. How are you guys doing? So, again, this is someone that I'm still watching, that I've been watching. In my head, I'm thinking maybe like 2005, 2006, but he's going to let us know exactly when he started. I'm not sure exactly, um, but we'll kind of talk about that. So, without further ado, I am going to bring in the man. If everybody's ready to get wet, Coming in is Brandon, a.k.a. Wet Movie One. What is up, man? Welcome to Rad Company, brother. <laughs> What's going on, man? I thought you were going to have like that, it's time to get wet, time to get wet. That, that whole you know song. I can't play that on here. I'm trying to be extra good now. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> you, you, you've, been, you've been like the little bad boy, man. You're in the bad boy. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm YouTube's resident rad boy right now. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I like I like uh, mid level media says it's time to get wet wet and rad. Yeah, <laughs> is that what he said right there? I didn't yeah. say. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I love it. That's that's a what. It sounds like a wild night, doesn't it? You want to yeah. come over and get wet and rad? I like that's, that. It's kind of like a Netflix and chill now, you know. Yeah, and so, Fon, Fon, Fonzie eight one eight in the in the chat right there is my boss at my the job I'm at right now. Oh, that's awesome, man! I'm we, glad he popped in. So you gotta you gotta be. Moving real good over here then you gotta be yeah, on your I, best I, behavior I, brendan i i can't i can't uh, i can't be insubordinate <laughs> so here's the new one here well guys if you want to tell people to come check this out share this link and put hashtag wet and rad okay <laughs> or, or rad and wet okay <laughs> oh my god all right so man um i'm happy to have this done i know it's something we've been talking about for quite a while but like, like your schedule is changed a lot now. So your flexibility is a lot different than it was uh, maybe six months ago. And not only that, but you're also on the West Coast. So things are just a little bit different when it comes to our availability and timeframes. That's why normally I do this show roughly on like a Wednesday, but um, we're doing it tonight on Sunday yeah. because, uh, because of your availability now with work and all that other stuff. So again, I'm glad we were able to kind of come to a time that both uh, would work for us. 
That's what I'm, uh, hell yeah, man. Because it's what like almost eight o'clock your your time right now, and six o'clock mine. It's nine mine right now. Oh, so okay. yeah, okay. yeah. So it's uh it's mine now. It's six years. So it these type of shows I like to get about an hour, maybe a little bit more, but it's not going to be a long, long show. So by the time we're done, we each still have a little bit more of the night left. At least you have plenty of time left to do whatever you do at this point. Yeah, like hit up the strip clubs and stuff. Yeah. So I mean, you're off tomorrow too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you got yeah, you'll be all night. You'll be probably live and later. You'll be going live later. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't really. I don't really have that schedule set like you guys. You and Dead Pit have like you know set days and do your things. And I don't. When it comes to when it comes to stuff, I'm just kind of like whenever I can put up stuff, I do it. You know. Yeah, I usually have um, pretty set days with most things, except for like the the rat up all nights. Like a lot of times, I may have an idea. Like maybe I'll go live tonight. But if I do, it's always like a last minute. I'll post it and be like, "Hey, I'm going live." And to be honest, for something that isn't advertised like the rat up all nights it actually sometimes does better than shows that are advertised and i don't know if it has to do with the timing like right now like for instance last night i went on at 11 30 and did like or 11 and did a show for like an hour and a half kind of random and you know there was more people hanging out and watching me than there are right now right so it's just interesting to see if i have maybe more people watching me from from the west coast but you know, sometimes I'm on here at one o'clock in the morning being like, all right, guys, I got to go to bed. And it's like, it's like at like, you know, 90 people are sitting there and I'm like, where, what's going on? You know? Yeah. It's just, it's really random. It all depends on, you know, who's on, like who's up and who's online and who's doing stuff. So we, 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 we never can crack down to a certain time that, you know, we all know that a good amount of people are going to be there watching. Doesn't, you know, you, we, we can never, right. we can never know. It is. It's, it's, you know, YouTube's kind of a tricky thing and you got to kind of learn, you know, what works for your channel, what doesn't now, with that being said, like I said before you came in, I was telling everybody that you're honestly one of the two or three people that I was really watching from day one when it came to physical media. Um, obviously, it was like you and Cool Dude were the two big ones um, that I remember for sure. Like, I mean, Dead Pit was around. I was listening to more of their podcast at that point. I know they were kind of dabbling a little bit with YouTube, but they weren't doing like, you know, haul videos or out and abouts or you know, physical media reviews or anything like that. And you guys were just really ahead of the game. And um, when did you start? I would say probably middle of like 2007 on my original channel before the, my other one got taken away from like copyright stuff. You know, you know how, you know, the kind of thing you're dealing with at the moment or whatever. Right. It is. I, I, so were you wet movie or yeah. then you had to add the one? Yeah, I had to add the one to it. And I didn't even know about the copyright stuff. I was just like used to using certain music for certain like videos and things. I had no idea back then. I was just sort of like just doing stuff and uh, woke up one day and the channel was gone. I'm like, oh, I, it's weird because I don't think many people probably knew that kind of stuff. Because I mean, what would I don't even know like what the rules could have been because you really got in here early. Now, a part of me feels like I I was watching you maybe bef like as when you were wet movie i think yeah. i can remember if i'm trying to think back on like when i remembered you like i remember videos where you were like at a you were like working you had like a s s little stand at like a flea market or something i don't know if i did videos there but i, I did talk about it uh around did around that time did I you think. ever go back to that place and like look around because i do feel like i remember you being there for something I think I think I did, but um, that place hasn't been there for years and years. They they kind of like demolished that place, I believe. The, in, the Valley Indoor Swap Meet, or they have a, now, they, Yeah. Do you know if you and Brent? I mean, you and uh, Sean got on around the same time, or was he first? Or you, do you know that? Because again, you guys definitely were the two that I was like really going back and forth with. I, I think he was on a little bit uh, a bit a little bit earlier than me when it comes to like like doing his stuff, the Donna Murph and all that stuff. But um, the the main reason that got me started uh, doing YouTube videos wasn't like you know watching say like you or Dead Pit or any 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 movie collectors really. It was all my my friend Dante the comic, uh, who made you know I was who I was friends with and who I you know started meeting different actors you know with and stuff like that. And uh, he made these short films, and he's like, hey, check these out. Let me know what you think. And I'm like, these are amazing. I mean, they were low budget, really bad, you know, like bad, but kind of had this charm to them. And I was just like, mm. if they can make this and I'm entertained by it, let me see if I can do the same, the same similar thing with the camera I have. And I did. And I uploaded my first short film to YouTube. Was it Night Owl? Yeah, Night Owls. I remember and, that. Okay. And that, that, was, that was like my entryway into the whole YouTube game. 
You know what I mean? And then some a couple of people watched it. I'm like, okay. Then I made a part two. And then I'm like, you know what? I'll talk, I'll, I'll make a first DVD update video. See, let's throw that up there for the hell of it. And then now I'm doing what I'm doing now. Isn't that wild now? Especially because, you know, obviously I I know a little bit about your backstory because we've talked about it. I've been watching it for so long. So I have kind of general ideas, but for someone like, like I know you had mentioned before, you know, the way you grew up and in school and, you know, maybe not being the most confident person in the world, right? I'm still not. To actually just be one of the first people to be like, you know what, I'm going to upload this and I'm going to put myself out there to the world in 2006, 2007, when, you know, even someone like me was toying with this idea around 2010, 2011 to kind of really start a channel up. And I kept finding reasons not to do it, you know, and, and not saying that I was ner like, it's hard. Like I wasn't self-conscious, I think, as far as like myself, but I think I was self-conscious in a way of like, how am I going to be on camera? What is my setup going to look like? Is it going to look, you know, not professional? Like I just wasn't sure. And, and I always kind of gave myself excuses and obviously being busy with work was a big one for me, but for someone like yourself, like what did you decide before anybody was doing this that you kind of got down and been like, Hey, I'm just going to put myself out there and put it online. To be honest, I don't know why I really did it. I think I just made the short films just to have fun, you know, then like, I, you know, premiered it with my family and friends and sorry if there's noise in the background, the, the, the my niece and nephew are like screaming and fighting at each other. You know how kids are, but, um, oh, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> I, I just sort of like you know made those and just like I had I put them on like my original uh, Facebook back in the day too. Uh, not was a Facebook, no MySpace, MySpace back in the day. Mm. And um, then I kind of just did some music videos with some friends and just kind of you know transferred some of those to the internet. And like I said, just people started clicking on them and watching them. Got a couple hundred views for the first Night Owls, and the next one got a couple thousand. You know, thousand. I'm like what? You know, that's how, that's pretty much it. I, I never really stressed or thought overthought about like production. Or like you know, like you know, like lighting, like how your videos always mm -hmm. look so look, look so cr crispy and stuff, and with the cool backgrounds and everything. I never really had that in my head or thought about that kind of stuff. I just sort of just did it, and just sort of happened. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, not only were you doing like DVD shopping and stuff, you were really taking us on a journey of of your life, right? Like that that's something that I really haven't dove into. You know, obviously, like back then, and I think it's not as as strong now as you know, the out and abouts or, um, you know, around the towns, those kind of videos where you were doing a lot of like vlogging, right? Like, yeah, I feel like that's not as strong as it was back then. And I don't know if it really just has to do with, you know, when it comes to physical media, the stores are not like they were back then. So to actually go in and, and, and get some good deals and stuff. Now it's like almost you're walking in. It's almost kind of embarrassing when you look in the aisles and you're like, there's nothing here. Right. But I can remember watching you guys do that and being like, okay, because I on Tuesdays, that was my uh, thing I would do. On Tuesdays, me and my friend Keith would go to the stores. And I'd sometimes, you know, try to grab one of your videos. Or like, let's say I was working Tuesday, I had to do it Wednesday. I would watch you guys to kind of see which stores had what. So it saved me a couple trips, like, here and there. And I'd go like, all right, Walmart didn't have this. Oh, Best Buy had this. Okay, I'm going to go check out mine. Like, I would really use those to really map out my day sometimes. And I feel like... Um, what, what part of like your channel did you feel like was really getting you steam? Was it stuff like that, that was, that you were really going? Yeah. At that time, people really dug, dug that. Cause I originally, that's what I was doing anyway, going to the stores on every Tuesday, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for new release movies, even back when the VHSs were around at Target and, you know, and all those different stores. So like, I, I've been doing this forever, uh, you know, off camera. So I was just like, you know, right. mine, mine, let's just do it on camera, but mine as well. See what happened, you know? See what happens, but out and about what what I, what I think was what kind of started off with people watching, like me and Gabriel just messing around town, right. doing stupid stuff, saying stupid stuff, like stuff that we cannot get away with now, you know. You but. know it, it's actually funny because uh, my brother as well, he's he's a big fan. Um, his wife Marissa, we've all been watching you for a long time, and you know, there's there's certain things that you know we'll still talk about to this day of videos that had happened forever ago. Like even sometimes like my brother will like go back and just watch like a bunch of those old ones. And sometimes he'll like send me a clip and it's just, it makes me laugh because it, things were so different even just in that short period of time of things that like Gabe would say that you're like, Oh my God, like that could never fly now. <laughs> like, you know, and I'm never, and I'm not sure, like, have you ever been like, 
dinged for videos on your channel that you did like 10 years ago <laughs> where well, also now they're like well you can't be saying this yeah i haven't really looked back at all those things because there's so many videos throughout the years but i'm sure there's like a lot of yellow little like you know yellow dollar signs on it you know what i mean like not like advertised for everybody right. kind of thing i'm sure just like every time i go live i get that same thing after the after the live show is done you know was like, you know the, the yellow dollar signs right next to all my live shows but it's like maybe, really maybe one out of every 10 I, i'm okay but mostly it's i get the yellow dollar sign thing now do you think it has to do with just things that are talked about or is that what you think it's coming from it might be but i'm, I'm never really sure because i'm not like super vulgar all the time like when it comes to things mm. but oh i am but i, I, don't know. I try I try not to be right right like i mean i don't i don't ever watch your lives and be like oh yeah he's he's out of context and saying certain things i don't know if it has to do with maybe some of the chat questions that get pulled up i, I have no idea but you know i can even remember you know when you guys were um obviously you were working at blockbuster during a lot of that time that you were doing it um you know gabe had that old girlfriend that used to hang out with you guys like i remember you know all that stuff and you know, I even remember, and I and I don't know if this is a little bit much, but man, like that one video you did where you found out about your father. Yeah, that I, I, to me is like, is that gone or is that still up? It's still there. I'm surprised I even I, I even made I even did that. In post I am shocked you you did that. Um, I can remember when that happened. I'm thinking to myself like what is he doing? But at the same time, it's kind of like maybe that was the best thing for you to do. To kind of like, you know, grieve maybe because it was like know. it was like in the moment. It wasn't even like, hey guys, here's what happened the other day, dude. I was like walking home and he was still there, you know, at that time. So I'm like, I don't even know. Like, I I was offered to get a ride home that night from my boss at the Blockbuster at the time, and I was just like, no, I, I I'm walking home today. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm just walking home today because like you know, but I was I was there and I got a phone call from my mom and I'm like, oh, shit, you know, and. uh I don't know. I I don't even like know why I did that, but all I know is when I when I got home that night, and you know the the cops or whatever were there, the ambulance or whatever, and you know I I, I couldn't I could I couldn't deal with the stuff. So like I'm sitting there pretending like I'm doing something on my computer the whole time as all this other <laughs> stuff's going on back here. You know it was it was it was it was it was it was, it was something you're not gonna forget. You know. No, not at all. And I'm not. And you know you don't know if. It's tough, man. You don't know if going back and watching that now is, would be like brutal for you to do, or if it would be something like you know it it brings back specific memories or whatever. It, it, it's interesting because that was just a definite thing that I I remember at the time where I was like, wow, like you know he's really putting himself out there, you know, in the in this YouTube space to people that and and you know I I know you've had a lot of supporters, you've had a lot of haters, you've had it's been up and down with you, and and it could have to do with a hundred different things now. Did you have you did you ever get to a point where you were like that kind of stuff just really bothered you to a point where you're like, why am I doing this? Or are you usually pretty good with people just just being jokesters and stuff on here? I'm I'm pretty okay with it. I mean, there was a time when that leafy character came around and did, I that, remember that. did, did that video and stuff. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I I made that response video to him that, around that time because that was like the thing to do. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like someone, the, the, a big YouTuber did it. So all these other YouTubers that he was making fun of were making response videos. Some of them were crying. Some of them were doing this and that. It was just kind of like a thing to do to try to get traction to your channel. As well, if he's using my content, might as well see if we right. can get people to come over here. So I, I wasn't really hurt by it because I'm so I was so used to getting made fun of in school anyway for being in special ed from you know elementary school you know all the way up to the end, and um. It was just a, kind of like a thing to do. So around that time, I was getting, I still get comments about that leafy guy and 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 videos sometimes. Now, is that know. video gone or is that still around? You know, I, I remember made, it. I kind of made it private because like there's certain people that just never let things go. You know what I mean? I sort of like it's there, but like I kind of just made it, you know, <laughs> made made it private because every once in a while there's some weirdos that come out. Now let me ask you this though: Did that give your give your channel a little bit of traction from the opposite end though like did it did it like as much as that is it hurt you or whatever did it help you as far as uh gaining new people to get their eyes on your your content or did you kind of find that the people that were coming over weren't really 
yeah, ended up being supporters. Yeah, they didn't really care for the most part. It was just a bunch of like you know people that were like like trolls for the most part that came over. I I did the video to be honest because there was a friend of mine, uh, Tommy NC twenty ten, um, who has autism and stuff like that, and he's been on his some of his videos have been on Tosh point oh, and things. And um, Leafy made fun of him, and he made a video response to it, and uh, he got like I don't know a couple million views to that video. And a hundred thousand subscribers overnight, kind of thing, and I'm just like, oh shit! And then like a couple weeks later, months later, the guy made a video on me. I'm like, oh, let's see what happens here, and nothing, mm-hmm. nothing, nothing to that effect. You know what I mean? Because like you, 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 you know, in this YouTube game, it's kind of hard to even, you know, be seen or even grow. Because like I've been kind of stuck at the same subscriber level forever, and it's, it's you know, I, I was I was trying to play the YouTube game at the time, and it's, now I just don't care. I just want to do what I do, mm-hmm. you know. It's it's definitely hard. Um, you know, I definitely see it. Um, that's why sometimes I'll go live on like these up all nights and I'll just hang out with people and chat away. And sometimes I'm like, hey, if you guys are liking my content, like share it up. Because again, we're especially now, like there's so many people out there doing this kind of stuff that to break through and to find new people that would be interested in this stuff, it's it's a lot harder because there's so many people doing it, right? Like like case in point, um, I one thing that really helped my channel out was that whole new horror YouTuber of the month. You know all, all about that situation, right? Yeah, Mel Mel, so, lost, Mel lost that one. Oh, <laughs> they're gonna they, she, she blames you for that, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, that you know that helped my channel out as far as getting more people's eyes on my channel because obviously people were voting all over the map for different creators. So you know people that may have been watching somebody that didn't know who I was when they went there and watched the video. They, they subscribed to everybody that was part of it. So again, that really helped my channel out. So I was curious about that because I think that that was a real big turning point in my channel was that little hump of that YouTuber of the month because it was, it was fun. People were promoting it. I was making it like a, almost like a game with dead pit where like we had like a little storyline going like this, this whole thing. And we'll talk more about that. Uh, on I'm gonna plug it right now the Rad Pack Super Show that's gonna be airing next uh, this coming Saturday. We're gonna kind of talk about highlights for the past year, how the Rad Pack was created. And to be honest, if there was no horror YouTuber of the month, there'd probably be no Rad Pack. Like it, everything kind of fell exactly how I wanted it. So um, anyhow, I was thinking about that the other day because there's a lot of new YouTubers that are kind of up and coming right now. And I was like, huh, I wonder where that horror YouTuber of the month thing is because, you know, I don't know where it went. Like, is it still around? Because you pass it to somebody, someone passes it to and it could be anywhere. Yep. So I was curious about it. And I was like, you know what? If it's not around anymore, like if it just stopped and it's dormant now, I'm like, I wonder if I can try to bring it back and, and try to showcase a lot of these newer people and, and kind of get the ball rolling for some of these younger channels that I'm checking out. And I found it. But like, honestly, dude, it's in like a different realm of like, (laughs) like movie reviews and horror movie stuff, like a realm that me and like nobody that I in my circle of people that I talk to or watch have even touched. So a part of me is kind of like, wow, like there's so many people doing this kind of stuff that like that's a whole nother world of people with fans that are watching their content that probably have no idea who any of us are. It's, it's bizarre. And so, like you said, it's hard to find these people that are interested in, in, in your content that are going to be supporters and, you know, find your stuff really entertaining because there's just so much out there. When back in the day, like I said, everybody look at, look at the chat. I'm going to pull it up right now. Mid-level media who is absolutely just destroying the YouTube game right now said, if it wasn't for you, he probably wouldn't, be here right so everybody knows you because you were one of the first the same thing with dead pit like everybody knows who dead pit is yep. because of the podcast anybody in hara knows who they are um they might not all know that they're on youtube now trying to you know gain more momentum again because they went on a hiatus but everybody knows a lot of the ogs so for you you probably saw a lot of like movement and now all of a sudden it's like you said it's kind of slowed down a little bit yeah, but when it comes to all the new pe- the new people doing these videos and collecting and stuff, it, it's kind of it's kind of funny to to watch some of their videos. Not 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 just like mid level media, but like all, you know all the different new people. But um, there's some people out there that are collectors, and I'm watching their videos and them buying stuff and showing stuff and doing stuff, and I'm feeling I feel bad for some of them 
because it, I, so to me, I'm watching them and it feels like they're just buying stuff just to show it on video. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Just to go like, I got this. And, and I feel bad because like, I know how the collecting itch is and where I'm, where I'm, where I'm at with stuff and like stuff and totes and yeah. boxes and different things. And I'm just like, I'm watching them going, eventually they're going to be in the same boat going, where the hell am I going to put all this? You know what I mean? Like, Dude, you know what? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, man, because I've kind of been talking about that. Now, again, I'm newer to YouTube, right? I'm, I'm on the newer end. I've not been doing it for like a little over two years. Well, you've been Certainly collecting I'm a little bit more. But you've been collecting right. forever, though. That's the difference, right? Like I've been doing this and I've been like, you know, for the majority of my life. So I kind of feel what you're what you're saying. And, uh, you know, it's hard because, you know, it, 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 it was a different animal when you and I were really heavy into this. Like you could get good deals, like deals of like, hey, you can get, you know, 10 for 10 on DVDs where now it's like you're spending like 30 bucks a title, right? Like the, the, there's not as much used stuff out there. And even if there is, you're not getting it for those kind of deals that we were getting back. So like, we kind of see it from a different angle where you're right. Sometimes I'll watch some people and be like, it's cool for showcase purposes, but like, there's going to be that day where they're going to look around and say, I'm out of space. This is not good because that feeling is terrible. And like you said, you same as me, that itch is there and it's real. And even if I say a hundred times, I'm not getting something. If someone showcases it, you don't think there's a part of me that's kind of like, maybe I'll try to get it. Yeah. And then think in my head, like, I don't need that. I don't need that. But it's a collecting mentality and an itch that I think a lot of us, especially people in the chat have, and you've just got to kind of figure out like how to control it. Because like you said, you probably look back and say, I've got so much stuff. I don't even know, don't know what to do with it. It's in bins in your garage. And you're thinking, you know, the only thing that's just going to, I'm going to do with these is have to move them next time I have to go somewhere. Right. And it's a pain in the butt too, to do that. You know, like I had Mm -hmm. a, at the house that we had, you know, before we moved back to to this apartment, a whole, like, it was like a three car garage and two cars of it was filled with my stuff (laughs) and boxes. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, what am I doing? And uh, I'm I'm trying I try to slim down my stuff, but it's kind of hard because certain places don't take them anymore. Right. It's, it's kind of like mm-hmm. in that same era when we were trying to get rid of our VHSs for DVDs and stuff. And I know you sold some that you're 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 mad about. And yeah. it, it's kind of like that with me too. There was some VHS stuff I did and sold that I'm like, why? Even though I haven't really watched VHS in a long time, but goddamn, I still have some back here, but Right, but they're, I think VHS is just an interesting format because you get nostalgia of the people that have money right now. It's nostalgic to them. They're just dis- they're nice display pieces, let alone, you know, like we're gonna all sit there and watch the VHS tapes. Um, they're that they, you can stand them up, they can get signed, they look nice. Like I can see your sidekicks right there. I got mine right here. I got the four K, so standing I don't, up. I don't need it, but like I got the you know. But it's nice to have because that was like the OG way to have that movie until recently, right? Like that was it. So to, to that, to me, like I look at that and I say, you know, before six months ago, that was a grail item for a lot of people because that was the only way to see that movie more or less for a while, you know, and that's why mine's on the shelf over here too, because it was one of those pieces where it's like, you know, this is an important VHS because I love this movie and it hasn't seen the light of day since. So I, I totally get it. And, you know, a part of me feels the same way now too. Like DVDs in a bad spot right now where people don't want it. And, you know, I could easily go to the thrift store down the street and hand over six to- totes and be like, just get it out of my house. But then five years go by and there might be a small resurgence where like a lot of that stuff is is valuable. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly why I think that could happen. Not due to quality, because again, you look at VHS, it's a whole different format. DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, it's all on disc. It's It's similar. Things work in the same player's. But seeing what's going on right now with studios and stuff and editing movies forever and cutting them like they're George Lucasing all these movies because of things that maybe not be, you know, appropriate to talk about now or whatever, man, some of these DVDs that you have that like these things are going to get cut next time it comes to 4K or Blu-ray and stuff like people might look back and say, oh, man, like I wish, you know, I wish I had that still. And I think that that may help the dvd aspect of it when it comes to either special features of someone who's passed away that they can't get on discs anymore or maybe the movies now have been edited completely so that one of the best ways to get it is either a dvd or an early blu-ray release or something like that i think they might gain a little bit of life back 
then it might be a better time to kind of try to stop pawning those off because that was the same thing. If I would have waited five years in the VHS game, I would have got a lot more for them if I decided to still sell them than I did then. But the thing is, we don't, for the most part, we don't buy stuff just to do sell it. We buy it because we want the stuff. And um, I mean, there's times I go to thrift stores and I'm trying to find stuff to flip on eBay because that's what I, I'd like to do sometimes. But for the most part, we buy stuff because we like it, you know? Of course. And, and that's the only reason I would sell it is because not that I'm bought, I bought it to sell it. I bought it, enjoyed it for 10 plus years. Now it's, you know, I've got three other editions of the same movie. I don't have room. And instead of just giving away something that I paid for, if I can, you know, get a little bit for it, you know, or return on investment, then I'm going to do it. I'm not right. specifically buying those being like, I'm going to sell them tomorrow. Like these are all things I've had for 15 plus years now that I'm like, I just, you know, if I have a friend that's looking for something and I have it and they're like, oh, I don't mind the DVD, I'll send it to them. You know, it's not a big deal, but if it's like, if I'm going to start selling lots or whatever, like, you know, I'd rather get a return on investment than just hand it over to somebody at some point. And if I, if I don't, then, you know, I'll just give them away to people that might want them or hang on to them as long as I, as I possibly can. But I think you may see a little bit of a resurgence with some, you know, not all movies, but some maybe on the DVD format, like I'm going to start talking more about some of those cool anchor base sets that we got back in the day that may you know, become more valuable because they were just so unique. Yeah, like the like the, like the like the wooden box for like a wicker exactly. man and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So those were really precursors to a lot of the stuff that we're seeing now um, in the in the DVD game when it comes to boutiques and all these special editions. But you know, like I said, one of the biggest things too uh, with watching you is that you've always been just very real. Like it's never you know, you always know who you're getting with you. You never really held back. You never tried to be somebody you weren't. And, you know, I really admire that about you because again, when it comes to the people that are on watching your stuff, you're either getting loved or hated. So it is what it is. Yeah. But the thing is when it comes to me, like when it comes to me putting out like personal stuff out there, like, you know, like my dad or, you know, other stuff, it could be a good thing and a bad thing. You know what I mean? Sometimes it, mm-hmm. you, people shouldn't really do it, but I've been doing it so long. It's kind of like, you know, like doing these videos is kind of like ther- therapy in a way sometimes when it comes to me like talking about talking about stuff yeah and you know what like you said it the more you do that the more ammo it gives specific people that you know i try to keep my personal life pretty you know personal uh sometimes i'll talk about little things but more or less i'm pretty not too open with it just again i've been lucky and who knows who's in the chat right now but I've really not had much problems with anybody on the other end of this. And I don't know if it's just, it's different nowadays than it was. I don't know. Or maybe I've just been lucky so far. But haven't, but you made a video talking about you being a Chippendales dancer, right? And so people know about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's old stuff. Mm. Um, okay. But right. so right. like, again, like we, you know, I, I, I don't like to obviously, and it's so funny because you probably think every time someone talks to you, it's always like they always bring up Sean because it's yeah. like for some reason you guys are categorized together, like always. Like I don't know if it just has to do with the same time, same place. Um, especially, I, don't, I don't know. Especially when it comes to like the Tuesday videos at the time. Now I haven't done them really done them in like over right. a year because of the job and stuff. And plus, like all the stores around me don't really carry anything when it comes to like Best Buy and stuff. Best Buy, my, my Best Buy doesn't carry stuff, but back then when we were doing it hard, me and Sean were both getting up our videos at the same time. And people were at the time, haters, some certain haters were like taking screenshots going, look, you know, they've been up at the same time. Look, they're holding the same movies in the same hand. Who <laughs> like, like why? Who cares? But you know, it's not like we, you know, it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of funny, but at the same time, we were getting a lot of screeners at the time, like movie screener companies were like sending us stuff like crazy. It was, there was a time like we would get something like two or three things a day. It was insane. Mm-hmm. Now, now the companies are sh- have like shifted to like TikTokers and you know things like that. We, right. we, we still get stuff from every once in a while, but like they kind of like shifted to those kind of people. That's my boss right here, Fonzie eight one eight. But yeah, things 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 have shifted when it comes to uh, the promoting game when it comes to movies and stuff. And I'm kind of old for the TikTok thing, so I I don't know what, what to do when it comes to that. Yeah, I mean, I I was very not against it, but I was very confused by it for a long time. Um, so I just kind of use it, you know. I'll post just funny clips or movie news or something. But the the problem with TikTok is actually for me, it's it's kind of um, 
been going pretty well lately. Like I put a little bit more effort into it over the last like couple months. But the only problem with it when it comes to what I'm doing on there is it's it's not personal at all. So for instance, there's not many videos that I'm in. Mm. There's a couple. So there's a lot of times people will be subscribing, but they don't know who I am. They don't know the name to the face, right? So, you know, there's other times where I'm like, oh, maybe if I go live and people kind of see who's behind the content, like it's different. And, and, you know, maybe someday I'll change it up, maybe not. But you're right. Like, it seems like a lot of these big companies are grabbing people from like a TikTok space that are just showcasing stuff for like five seconds where back in the day or even on YouTube, when you get sent stuff, the expectation is that you're doing a couple minute review on the thing, right? Like yeah. we're on TikTok, You can't even really do that. You just got to basically showcase, Hey, look what I got. And it's coming out from this company. Boom, done. Yeah. And like that, that's okay for a lot of companies, which is, which is wild because you know, man, I would like to get more stuff sent from, from bigger companies, but obviously my channel is not big enough for that, but I but usually, you- will put the time in and, and do it if you know I get you, sense you, of it. Sure. you need to know dude especially back then when me and sean were getting all this stuff it was insane like the the amount of stuff and the time like they want certain things up in a certain time and if you didn't they were like why and this and that I'm, it, it was it was kind of stressful like most i'm not gonna lie there was a good amount of stuff that we didn't even watch and we just went <laughs> you know because that's you know they wanted they, we got it you know, when we got to say we got something on a Monday, but they want you to showcase it on that Tuesday. I was like, how the hell are we going to watch this in that time period? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Dead Pit said that that was happening a lot to them too. And there was a lot of points that they were like, we we're just getting so much stuff that it was like, we weren't even, it wasn't even exciting anymore. It was like, what kind of crap did we get today? And you know, I, I, I kind of in the same boat, like I would love to get some cool additions. Like sometimes I see these people that are opening like, you know, big, huge boxes. Like there's a guy I know that got a, when Chucky, the show came out, the company sent him a doll, like a full size doll to promote Mm -hmm. that was promoting the show. Like, I'm like, Holy crap. Like, but he's earned that, right? Like he's earned that kind of stuff, but I would love to get stuff like that. But I, what I wouldn't like is being involved with a specific company and they're giving you everything. Like I'd like to be able to choose like, Hey, here's what my channel is about. Here's what I'm looking for. If they give you a list instead of them just sending me, because I don't want to be, you know, have to talk about movies that I don't really care about. You know what I mean? I, like that's I, I the got, only difference. I got booted off some lists because of that. Uh, you know, back in the day, and only because they they sent me everything. Like I'm like, right? How about maybe is it okay if you send me the stuff I I I ask for that I will talk about and stuff that I know or or interested in? No, we're gonna send you this. Like seven here's seven seventies porn. Here's you know. You know, like whatever, Jeep, Jeepers <laughs> Creeper, Jeepers Creepers. You know what I mean? Whatever. And I'm just like, I'm not gonna talk. I'm not gonna even watch or talk. Like, what am I gonna do with this? And if I didn't talk right. about it, eventually they're like, you know what? You're not talking about our stuff. Goodbye. I'm okay. I wasn't asking mm-hmm. ninety for ninety percent of this, but all right. Yeah, it is tough, man. It's tough. And it, it, in one end, you know, when I started this thing, I was like, you know, that could be a goal of mine. I've always wanted to get screeners. I've been buying movies for decades and decades if i got sent a couple uh that i that i didn't have to go out and buy like i'm like oh that's a you know that's a very big goal and an accomplishment that because i used to see that people were getting them all the time um and again i would love to get to get more but like you said it's it's a slippery slope sometimes and i don't know if their rules are different now because you know they're pretty much like you know we'll find people blah 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 blah. like you know do the reviews don't you know they're very iffy about you giving out contact info and all this other junk so it's just it's an interesting space out there but again i mean like you said are you getting sent stuff still now from yeah. certain companies or no yeah yeah it's definitely not as heavy as it used to be but like right, I, still, right, right. I, I, I still get some things from time to time and uh i have a package over there i got earlier i, I already know what's in it i, sh- I wish i, sh- I should have put it next to me so i can open it on video but uh do you want to you want to go get it yeah, my I'll well. go back to the chat. All right, I'm gonna go yeah. back to the chat while you're going to get it. Cool. We'll All do right, a little cool. live unboxing. Too sweet. What up? Oh, hopefully, wet movie's frozen. I hope you can come back here. Are, are we here? Oh, I'm here. Yeah, you okay. you already went. Oh no, no, I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh, all right, all right. Want to be rad, baby? Oh, look at that! He's got the shirt on. What a! Uh. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Hold on, am I missing people here? Uh, I'm sorry if I'm missing anybody. I'm people are talking to each other here. Um, bah, 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 bah. look at this little rad pack from the master, Pat Master. Uh, 
Real Fright, what's going on? Half the channels of just people showing with the studios send them for free. Different creators basically putting out the same. That's the tough thing, right? Because if studios are sending out, they're sending us all the same stuff. So it's hard. It's hard because you're going to probably see the same videos. To be honest, like a lot of my review videos are what do the least as far as view counts. And it's probably because people have seen everybody else talk about it. What's up, Magic Hands? Yeah, a lot of people were for sure. He, you know, he came stemming off Dead Pit stuff and, you know, he's done really, really well. I've known Piz for a long, long time. And a lot of people that are in the YouTube game now were watching him early. And I, yeah, I've been watching him since day one, too. Um, as w when he started up. All right. Am I good? Same. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay. I got this package. I think it was yesterday. Yeah, Saturday, yesterday. And it's coming from Shout Factory. Woo! Um, I'm so glad I still get stuff from them every once in a while. I was going to say, that's a, that's, a, that's a hard company to get stuff sent for, from. So Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely, I don't get everything. It's just kind of sporadic. But I already know what this is because they have the title of it on the front. But, um, Ooh, baby. oh, yeah, you've seen it here first. Creep show in the house. Yeah, we got the, the 4K of Creep show, but it, it's cool and everything. But I kind of always like this one. This one's kind of yeah. bad. Girl. I'm actually not planning on upgrading because, unless you know, it comes back and it's like I watch both of them and it's you know, it's five times better looking and this, that, and this, but I doubt it but i mean as far as the packaging and stuff i do like that artwork a lot yeah me too um but you know having the hard box is fine for me um yeah. but i mean hell if they if they want to send me one i'm all I for know. checking it out and reviewing it no doubt no i know i know what you mean but uh like i even have the, the shout factory paperwork in here and it says uh arrives on june 20th uh in stores everywhere a new two disc 4k blu-ray combo pack from scream factory <laughs> June Heck 20th. yeah. June so Screen 20th, Factory, everyone. if you're watching this by any chance, just, you know, you can go born be at gmail.com. You can find me um, on Instagram. Just send me a message if you're interested in sending me uh, some stuff to review. And if, you, and if you guys are watching, he is a good guy. He is a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's cool, man. That's that's awesome that you got that. Yeah. A little exclusive here. But um, I usually try to like, save packages to like, make a video just opening stuff. It's kind of simple. But, you know, when it comes to collecting, uh, physical media was what it came first. And I kind of shifted my collection a little bit <laughs> over the last handful of years uh, to autographs. I know I, I, was, I was just going to get into that because, you know, being a physical media guy for so long, like you said, it's there's so many. I, you probably feel the same way. I love it still. And I love getting finding new gems like that. Maybe Vinegar Syndrome puts out or something. I'm like, wow, I didn't own this. I've never seen it. And this is a real cool movie. It's it's fun. But there's only so many times you can buy the same movies over and over and over again, where you kind of like not, you're not at that point where you need everything every anymore. And then what happens is there was a point in time, man, before, like, I feel physical media. Is it like a real big high right now? There was a point where I felt physical media was kind of dipping where I was like, there's nothing I need anymore. All I got to do is keep up with screen factory and I'm golden. Like this was before vinegar syndrome really hit. This was yeah. like that weird in between where I really wasn't buying a lot of physical media. I was like just keeping up with Screen Factory and that was pretty much it. And then what happens is your mindset, that collecting mindset starts to look at other avenues now of all of a sudden. And for me, it was posters. For me, mm -hmm. it was screen prints. That's what really started happening to me. I was like getting more involved with screen prints and posters. But now you're talking about a $25 DVD or Blu-ray versus now you're spending 60 to $200 on a poster, right? Like, it's different. Like the money was like a lot different than if you bought like a couple Blu-rays or whatever, but also autographs were another thing that I was really into. But for me, it was more like I was just collecting them from conventions. Like I would go and meet your, your collecting autographs now is your main collecting hobby, but you're like really in the weeds of like trading in groups and trading groups. And I, I, even, I even get stuff from some of these companies that hold private signings that send me stuff like, like how screen factory sends me this. I get stuff from certain companies too. It's kind of insane when it comes to autograph stuff. Now, not, not everything, it, but some. Sure, but I mean, I would, man, I would love to, to have someone send me an autograph and me do a freaking review on it. Like, I would love that. Like, was it a similar situation with? Did they find you? Were you in a, a group? Did they know you did YouTube? Did you reach out? Like, I mean, 
how did you get in their radar considering the the majority of collecting and YouTube was on movies, not autographs, and you were still getting sent stuff? Well, I, I always work. I was first off, I was always I, I've been collecting autographs for years. You know, the first one I ever got was Hulk Hogan on a Mr. Nanny VHS back in like the late 90s or 97. I don't know, 95, between 95, 98, I'm guessing. And um, when he was at Tower Records in Hollywood promoting his CD that he was pretty put out, Hulk Hogan, the wrestling boot traveling band. And, um, you know, I, I kind of kept, I always kind of kept it safe. It's not, it's not in the greatest condition or anything, but I always trying to kept it, kept it safe even when, at my young age. And, um, I've been collecting, you know, autographs too, like throughout at horror conventions throughout the years as well. And, uh, I think it's just like be, being in these different autograph groups. I bought, I bought, bought a couple of mystery boxes, you know, autograph mystery boxes from some, from some, from some places. And then posted them in the groups, and like some of the people in the groups work for some of these companies, and mm. you know it's just kind of like a whole. It just it just sort of happened a little bit. Sure. Not 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 everybody does it because like you know, right? But I mean, if you're a company and you're like, okay, this dude collects autographs, he's got a good following, he's doing YouTube, then why why not? Right? Like, if you were in a face, they're not going to send everybody in the Facebook group free stuff because there's a lot of them probably don't have a channel like you do, right? So there's no there's no promoting for that company. It's not doing them any favors, but for someone like you, who's into this stuff and has, you know, someone of a, a fan base to showcase it to, then that company is going to probably benefit from that, you know? Well, and I, and I who, feel who, like, I, who knows? I try to help them. I don't know if it does I, with my channel. I'd never know if it, anything helps or hurts anything. You know what I mean? Like actually hurts. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it hurts, but I just don't know how much it right. helps because I'm not like the biggest, you know, guy on the planet. I, I am big. We're not like YouTube style. big. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, again, uh, people that are in here right now that don't know Brendan, he's one of the OGs of YouTube. And I think like, again, you're, you're very known by everyone that's been around collecting for a long time. And you know what, maybe you're not, you haven't been seen by a lot of these new people because again, maybe they're watching people like Ken and all that stuff. Because or they, they're or, like, or, or they, or they watch me going, I ain't going to watch this grandpa. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 this old geezer and shit. I rather watch Ken and you know, like uh, Mr. Nichols and things like that instead of my old ass. Well, you know what else is is funny, and we'll, we'll get into that again. But let's let's stick on the autographs for a little bit. Is that um, we've talked about this before? We actually did a show with Dead Pit, and we showed some of our autograph grails and stuff like that. And I'm sure we've all got a little bit more since then, especially you. <laughs> um, be, be, uh, we can showcase that one if you haven't, if you unless you're waiting to do it on your channel or whatever. But uh, um, I, I already showcased the thing that I took a picture of today, but I have something else um, in this box that I can showcase to you guys. So let me ask you this though, because I'm afraid to join these kind of groups because I feel like it's another slippery slope of like yes. once I start getting really involved, I'm gonna be I'm gonna go bananas and it's not a it's not a cheap hobby. No, at no, all. Hell no. But at the, but at the same time, you also are gambling in a sense where sometimes you'll give somebody a grail of yours to get something better, but then at the same time, you're kind of, it's cool, but then you might be like, well, I'm going to kind of miss what I gave away, but it was the only way I could do it to get what I, you know what I mean? Like there's, I know. there's different avenues where you can trade. Right. So, mm -hmm. but that's another thing because I would hate someone to be like, like, let's say like, Hey, I want this. And someone's like, well, give me that. And I'll be like, okay. And then also I'll give it to him. I'll be like, but that had so much sentimental value because I met the person, you know? So it is an interesting game because you can trade where mm -hmm. you know there's not a lot of times in the physical media world where all like you you people trade with each other like their baseball cards like hey yeah. I'll give you I'll give you this brand new blade in the dark set for that creep show 4K and then like we set ship them to each other like it just doesn't usually go that way because they're easily accessible where autographs are not easily accessible and that's the problem is that like if someone has something you're kind of like ooh I may never see that again yep like this right here i'll probably make a video talking about it too in the future but uh this one this is this person you can get right you can get you can get you can get her autograph at convention she does she does the circuit and stuff but on a piece like this i don't know how often people see stuff like this a steak hell yeah christy that's Swanson. so funny dude check this out a buffy steak signed by christy swanson you got one too come on my man, <laughs> yeah, We're, we have problems, man. Jesus, <laughs> Christy Swanson. But well, yours says Buffy, mine says duh. 
<laughs> yeah. No, no, like this, this right here is like, is like uh, burnt into the wood. Bro, guess what though? I got a heart though. Look at heart. She gave uh, me a heart on mine. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that is wild though. And you're right. Like these are the type of pieces that I'm really into now. Like, I mean, I have a ton of eight by tens. I have posters and stuff, but when you can get something unique, like something like this, that you can display, like it really means a lot more or, yeah. you know, obviously a big poster. Um, I think personally, maybe you can talk me uh, about it with me. Uh, One of my mistakes when I started doing conventions, you know, when you first start doing conventions, you're excited. You just want them to sign something. I was getting a lot of DVDs signed and I look back now and feel like that was a huge mistake uh, for many reasons. Oh, dude, that's, and, what I, that's what I started doing too. Like I have people on, on items. I'm like, damn, I should have got like a poster or something else. I'm like, why do I have Wes Craven on a DVD? That's the only time I ever met him. Or like Toby, right. Hooper, you know, Toby Hooper on my DVD too. So if you could talk to people that are getting into autographs or hitting up these conventions, would you tell them just for long-term purposes to try to steer clear of like the DVD signing? Because for me, it's one of those things where it's hard to display DVDs. They go out of, you know, DVDs get upgraded. You sometimes you might be like, this is just taking up space. But like for something like a Craven, like just because it's so rare. I would put that in like a freaking shadow box or something and hang it on the wall. Like that's what I would do with that Craven one or take the paper out and like fold it out and then have it on a frame or something, because that's a really unique item. I'm thinking have. about maybe doing something like that. Cause I have the Robert England signed Freddy glove. Right. Mm -hmm. And I have the nightmare on Elm street, original DVD snapper case signed by Wes Craven. So maybe I can like do some sort of something, you know, with, I don't know. But we'll I see. would say if you open up that snapper and then maybe stick it in a shadow box or just close it and then put it in a shadow box so you can then just hang it on the wall and it's in a glass case. I mean, I think that would probably be cool. Now, it's funny that you bring that up because when I met Robert England the first time, there was somebody in front of me with that snapper case, like getting yeah. that sign. But the snapper case, because it was like that cardboard, the back was completely torn. Like, so Ooh. it was all the white, you know what I mean? And they're like, I remember them like, I'm so excited to get him to sign this. I'm thinking in my head, like, bro, that thing is like wrecked. Like, why yeah. are you going to have him sign that? You know, I remember just sitting in line uh, to do that. And that was always one big thing was the DVDs, just because I have some, like I have Jeffrey Combs on a reanimator one. I have the the Rob Zombie's Halloween signed by almost the whole cast on a freaking DVD and it's me, just me one too. of those things. <laughs> me too. I'm like, I wish I would have just got the. I have the original one sheet. Yeah. But the one sheet thing is weird because like my uncle's a huge one sheet collector and his his rules are like never get that shit signed or never never change it from its original you know being. That's kind of his mindset. So I was always hesitant about having original signed. Now I don't care much anymore. I'm kind of fine with it. But he, from a collector standpoint, he's like, oh, you know, if it's if it's touched or whatever, people, you know, would rather have it clean or bare or whatever. So that's why I didn't do that a lot of the times. Um, but now I'm fine with that. I'd rather get that than a DVD um, yeah. all day long. But you do have some pretty unique pieces, man. And I, there's one that you posted online today that you had showed me a couple days ago, and. It's an expensive piece, and I think the what you got it on is freaking perfect. Right? Like what else? Like, I yeah. I don't know what else I would have ever done. I mean, I I would think that that's even cooler than the hat. I think it's cooler because the hat's just big. You know, like I think it's cooler than an eight by ten. Um, the only other thing I may have wanted it on was like let's say I had like a original poster of like Survivor Series ninety or whatever, yeah. like ninety one, like. Maybe something like that, but if you have that accessible and you know what I'm talking about, show that up. I don't. I don't. It's in the. It's. Uh, it's not next uh, to me right now, but uh, um, people can see it on the Instagram if they want to. And if they do follow, if they do follow me on my Instagram at uh, Wet Movie underscore One, I will be doing a very special giveaway uh, on there and, uh, tomorrow. I'm gonna be putting up a picture up tomorrow. But this is the item I'm talking. We're talking about an autographed urn signed by the Undertaker. So sick, dude. Look at that. Like, I mean, that is so killer, man. Now, I'm assuming that that you had to buy that secondhand or you had to trade for that. I traded two 16 by 20s, one signed by Peter Weller, uh, Robocop, and a Ben Affleck as Batman, uh, which I which I already had two of from the, the different companies. So I, I still have I still have the ones I have. So I was just I, I gave those two and they gave me that. But the thing is with trading, 
I'm always nervous as hell until I'm actually getting until I actually get it. Like, is this person going to screw me over? Or am I not going to get it? Is it going to come damaged and or whatever? You know what I mean? I always have that in my head. Um, you know what though, man, that was a freaking killer trade because, well, again, you're talking to somebody who I don't really, I don't care too much. Like I don't, if I had a Ben Affleck autograph, cool, but like, he's yeah. not anybody that I'm like, I need to have that. I would like um, to get him on like a day's confused or something. That'd be cool. Sure. Um, I do have Peter Weller autograph, which I love, but the thing about Peter Weller is he's in the circuit right now. So, I, I mean, you could really, you know, contact somebody and be like, Hey, are you going to this convention? Get me this because it's, it's easily attainable. And he's the pricing on him is kind of normal undertaker. Yeah. You're paying, you're paying a couple oh. hundred bucks easy. And he doesn't do a lot of shows. Yeah. To taker is doing a private signing right now uh, with this company called dark parlor originals. And uh, I think they're halfway sold out right now. And he's starting at like two twenty five or something like that. Just for him to sign something. Um, Oh, there we go. Yeah. Two sweets said the same thing. Side hustle. Okay, he knows. He, you're, you're OG, brother. Yep. Um, hold on, I'm probably way behind on the chat, so um, I'll, I'll kind of scroll down as you go. But yeah, I mean, see, look at this, my boy Captain Hara. What's up, Wetman? When this is a special goat edition. Look at that, man. Do you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you? Do you, uh, do you like feel? that you're an influence to a lot of people out there now? Does that ever go through your head or do you kind of, does do you just kind of feel like you're just doing your thing and not even thinking I, about YouTube anymore that much? I mean, I think about YouTube stuff and um, there's times I get, I, there's once or twice, you know, every, you know, throughout the years, I get messages from people saying certain things that, you know, like kind of touch me and stuff like saying that they were in the hospital and they watching my videos kind of, you know, help them get through, which is sometimes I don't know if they're telling the truth or they're just saying it just to say it, but I don't know. But especially when I go to conventions like Monster Palooza and other places, they people come up to me and stuff. It's kind of weird, you know. I mean, it's cool, I you know, but it's kind of still kind of weird to me. Does it weird to you when you know actresses are doing Q and As and they bring up Wet Movie One? Is that weird to you? I mean, it's cool as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't, don't get me you know, wrong. I mean, if Scout Taylor Compton was doing a Q and A and all of a sudden she's like, "You got to check out Born to Be Rad," like I love <laughs> that guy. Like if that was happening at these conventions, like I'd be on the top, you know. I'd be on cloud nine, but yeah. it's not, and it probably never will. But like at the same time, when Felissa Rose is there doing her conventions and all of a sudden she starts talking about wet movie one, I know it I must know. feel pretty good, man. You know, no, it is pretty cool. Felissa, Felissa, Felissa is a queen, man. That's like my future ex-wife right there. <laughs> She's dude. She honestly is like one of the nicest people. And you, and you've seen her, like I've only seen her in the convention scene, right? Like, and the thing is with her is I've met her or I talked to her probably maybe four times in my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, but she remembers you every time. Like yeah. think about all the people she's met, unless she's just that good of an actress that she pretends to remember me. You know oh, what that, I mean? Like that'd be amazing. She, the whole time, like, <laughs> That'd be, like the whole time, like she sees me again, she's like, "Oh no, that fat ass again." Oh, shit. No, she knows I, you. I, but I, I, have to, I, have, like, I have to act like I give a shit. Uh oh. Like I'm saying, someone like me, she knows you because you know her. You you've talked to her outside of the convention yeah. scene. Like you you've seen her like in person. Like you guys you guys live in proximity to each other. You've mm -hmm. gone and seen her at bars and nightclubs and yep. at stores and stuff, right? So. She knows who you are, but like, you know, when I've seen her a couple times and I have another friend, Holly, who's a mutual friend. So if I see her at a convention, we'll be hanging out and she'll run right up to her. And of course, you know, uh, Felissa will come up and, and remember who I am and um, whatnot. But like you've seen her outside that realm. Now, to me, I always bring her up as one of the nicest people that I've ever met at a convention. Very personal um, all the time. Now, is she that exact same way outside that scene? Uh, yes, to me, yes. I have not seen her in any, any bad light or anything like that ever uh, in any places. I would say some two of the nicest, like celebrities that I or three of the nicest celebrities I've ever met was her, Jamie Kennedy, and David Arquette. Three of like the coolest mm -hmm. like people that generally look like and act like they give a shit about you know. I don't know how to explain it. Like they have this like aura about them when when you when you when I get to see them and see, talk to them and stuff. Same mm -hmm. same thing with Thomas Nicholas. Like he's he really super cool, down to earth dude. The kid from you know the guy from Rookie of the Year in American. Oh Power. yeah. I just put up a video uh, with him that I made yet the other day, 
and uh, su- really just super cool people uh, that are that are you know been in my life throughout the you know the movie the movies and things throughout the years, and it's kind of cool to I can call some some of these people like friends and stuff. Yeah. Now living where you live is also a big help when it comes to that kind of stuff too. Like there's always, it always seems like there's something going on. Now, do you feel like there is, or no? if it's going on, you're always there or you like, there's so much going on. I miss a lot of it too. Like, well, before, before the pandemic, it seemed like I was at everything. Like I was invited to things. I was going to these things, you know, people were telling me about different things and, but now since the pandemic and uh, my job is kind of hard to get to everything and go to everything and, do all that stuff but at the same time when it comes to the whole hollywood game especially with independent movies and the the premieres i would get invited to for the most part or like the more independent style kind of you know low budget movie stuff and i to be honest hate that fucking uh, hate that game because there's people there that are there just kissing other people's butts the whole time Mm -hmm. even if the even if the movie is garbage and like really bad people are there going oh my god it was amazing i love you i can't wait to work with you again but I see that I the way I, I the way I see it in this world or at these things, I see those actors saying that to those these directors and different other people, producers and stuff. Oh, it's amazing! Oh my god! Oh, they, yeah, I can't wait to do more stuff with you. And then I see when I'm like other, you know, because I'm I'm you know I'm always walking around doing stuff. I see that same person with the person that that person was you know saying, "Oh, I love you! It's amazing!" Right outside as they're leaving. God damn it! I'm glad we're leaving. That was trash. You know what I mean? Like, I hate the fakeness of how mm-hmm. I, hate, I hate I hate the whole fakeness of shit. Be real with people. Like, you don't have to say it's trash in the person's face, but just don't be like, oh, oh I love it. It was yeah. amazing. I can't wait to work with you again. And then two seconds later, you're outside going, God damn, that was garbage. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, I hate that stuff. Now, also, too, like being out in that area, too. Are you seeing a lot of celebrities on a regular, even outside these events? Like if you're just walking down the street or going to get something to eat, someone's sitting there and it's just kind of like it's just kind of what you're so used to. Because, again, for me, it, it, that doesn't ever really happen this way. Yeah, we're, we're kind of used to it. I mean, it, it does happen. Not like every day or anything. Right, right, right. But like there's like this restaurant next to my buddy Aaron's house in Burbank. Uh, he was there and he's just like, dude, he's like he just like. Like randomly, like like a creeper, like takes like a random picture, just like you know, from his phone, going, dude, you know, um, what's his name again? <sighs> Man, I can't, I can't forget it. I, I just forgot his name. Uh, one of the biggest, the comedians in the world at the moment. Uh, like he's all oh, the... like, he's like in everything, and or a couple of years, like he was he's teaming up with The Rock a couple times. Oh, like, Kevin Hart. Yeah, like Kevin Hart was just like sitting there. I'm like, what? I'm like, all right. And like yesterday, Mr. Nichols sends me a picture because he was he was in Burbank, like at Bob's Big Boy, going, "Hey, Brendan, is that Steven Spielberg?" I'm like, "Like, dude, I don't know. This is a blurry picture." Yeah. I'm like, you know, because in the Warner Brothers lots right. right there, I'm just like, dude, that would've been amazing if I just ran to Steven Spielberg. But so basically, you should always just have in your backpack like something for Steven Spielberg to sign in case you ever ha- happen to run. And imagine having that autograph. I'm sure that's not one you see all the time. No, I, I do see it in the groups, but it's like you know, like a thousand bucks or more, you know, kind of mm-hmm. thing. So, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I don't want I, I don't ever ever want to be one of the chasers. Uh, like right, like people, that's a that's a whole different game, man. You know, and I I know people in that game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I know people in that game, and um. It's not, I, I, and I've, I've seen some of the, you know, for people that don't know, autograph chasers are people that know where celebrities are going to be at, like airports, hotels, and like chase them down with stuff going, hey, sign my, you know, sign my stuff. And I've seen it in person at certain events I was at, like on the out, on the outskirts, I see people like line up and hopefully gets like, you know, uh, Angelina Jolie, I saw her once. And people were like fighting each other, like, you know, pushing and hitting each other, just trying to get their hand over a gate to get something signed. It's kind of sad. But that's the way now, they, that's their living. Now let me ask you this: Is that do you know a lot of these people that that's their full time gig is to just get those and sell them off? Because I mean, you've got to be able to like be available, right? Like that's the thing. Like you can't really have a full time job and then be able to like meet wrestlers or actors in a mo- in an airport at four in the morning or whatever. Like you just or at twelve o'clock at night, it's just not going to happen, right? So do you do a lot of these people do this and that's their like almost like paparazzi, like that's their full time gig is to buy and sell that kind of stuff or like to- it's, it's yes, it seems like it. But when I talk to them, they always say, "Oh, it's from my personal collection." I'm like. You need thirty of these things signed. <sighs> Bullshit. Right. Like these people, I there's a lot of them that are not really trustworthy. They're really weird, 
weird individuals. There were some at that Thomas uh, Thomas Ian Nicholas thing I was at the other day, and like that I've seen at other you know big things chasing down people down the streets in their car, you know, in cars. I'm like, this is stupid. And I'm well, like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to like associate with some of these people because they're really not the kindest people on the planet. Yeah, but you know what though? That those people like that sometimes will make celebrities the way that they are too, because like case in point i've only been around a situ like situation like that once in my actually twice in my life once i was kind of one i guess in a way um yeah. so johnny depp was doing black mass uh, around here and i was able to get the elm street poster signed kind of uh, offset or whatever but anyway there was one incident where Kiefer sutherland's band was playing in my area and my friend mike and i being a huge lost boys fans I had never met him in my life. He was not doing conventions. And I was like, oh my God, I have this Lost Boys poster. I have tickets to this concert to go see him. Like I've, I've got to find an opportunity to get this guy to sign this. Like I have to. Yeah. So my friend Mike and I went down there early to see if maybe we could catch his bus pulling up or something or whatever it is. And we went down there and we're hanging around. We got our posters like in our hand. And then all of a sudden you just see a mob of people coming down. He's coming. He's coming. Yep. And we're like, what? And like, there's a lot of people. As soon as he pulls in, he gets out and everybody runs over to him. I'm like, oh no, like this is not good. Yep. So luckily we were kind of one of the first people there. So we were kind of in the front. So he like came over, said, what's up guys. And he, he's like, I hope you're going to the show tonight. And I'm like, I'm going, I'm going. I got my tickets right here. Huge fan, blah, blah. blah. He grabbed my poster, signed it, took a quick picture. Yep. My friend Mike had the action figure from NECA. He signed that, took a picture with him. And all these other people had like baseballs, like random shit, like that no, didn't no, even no, really make no, sense. Those like, are the those are the chasers. Those are the resellers. Yeah. So like, they're handing him like baseballs and like stuff like that, and he's kind of getting aggravated now. And he's like, "I bet you want going to the show." And the guy's like, "No, next time." And he's like, "Then he's like, gotta go back in the truck, whatever, guys. Sorry, blah, blah. and he went back in. Luckily, my friend Mike and I had ours done." Then he went right on like Facebook or whatever and did like a live or IG or whatever. And it was yeah. like, I'm signing no more things at the beginning at, during my shows. I just had an incident where like I was mobbed by all. The, and, and I started to feel bad because I'm like, shit, I was right there. You're, you're fine. But I think, but I think what happened was he saw what the transpired where people were just like having him sign anything. Like there was yeah. nothing themed for him. It was just, you know, and he put this big post out saying, I will only be signing at function signing events or whatever. It's kind of like going forward. So it's kind of like Ringo yeah. Starr, one of the, you know, one of the, the living legends, you know, from the Beatles. He 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 was one of the uh Beatles that was signed all the time, but then now he's just like, you know, well, he made a big he put up a video years ago talking about I'm never signing stuff again. You know, peace and love, peace and love and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't consider that incident with you with Keeper Sutherland as chasing because you actually went to the you actually went to the event, and all you did was like probably like wait outside the side door or something, right? Because I've done that a couple times. I, yeah, like, I stood I stood out in the we were just kind of walking around the building looking for buses or anything, and then we were like, well, maybe he's here, maybe he's not. Let's just hang out. And it was this was like hours before the show. No, and I know. It, 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 it happened to pull up. Yeah, like it, I mean, I think it would have been fine if if that crowd didn't come with all that other stuff. Like I think if he saw me and my friend hanging out there with some Lost Boy stuff, he would have said hi, took pictures, and like would have been fine. But I yeah. think what happened was he started to see like it was just getting out of control and like the stuff he was being handed to sign, like it was just, it just didn't seem genuine. And then when he started telling people about the show, my friend and I were the only ones who were like, Oh, we'll definitely be there. And the other guys were like, no, next time, you know, and they were like, they bounced afterwards. And that I think really pissed him off because he was really trying to promote his, his music at the time. And we ended up going and, and watching it. And he did have some signed items. I bought like a, his band poster with him signed. So I did buy another signed item at the event and all this other stuff too. So, um, but yeah, that was the only incident I ever was at where something like that happened. And, yeah. uh, yeah, he basically, after that put a kibosh on like, he's on tour to do his music. He's not there to sign. If you want his autograph, it needs to be through a, uh, some kind of autograph signing or at like a comic con or something like that, which then he started actually doing some events like after that, you know, yeah. after that tour, but, prior he had never done anything is there like, there's it's the same thing with um uh i met jeff goldblum once i talked about this before and uh he told autograph seekers outside i'm not signing shit i'm not signing stuff for anybody you know what i mean who is this who is this jeff goldblum 
Uh, oh, oh you know, okay. Yeah. For like for like the people outside with all you know all their stuff. He's like, I'm no, sorry. But then I'm like, oh shit. So like in my mind, I'm like, oh, I, why did I bring my DVD for it or my Blu-ray set or whatever? I saw I whatever. I put it in my bag, went into the event because I bought my ticket to go see him. And everybody in that event that wanted that had something for him to sign or you wanted a picture with him, he was doing it. So you, you know, if, as long as you were in there, you know, he didn't care. And you you know, if you bought your ticket to see him live or whatever, he didn't care. But yeah, it's it's really weird. But I don't count your 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 thing as chasing. Uh, because I've seen mm-hmm. stuff that you know, it's just you know, fans like us. We, go, we buy a ticket to the event, and we hope to maybe see something, maybe see them on the side door after the show or before the show or something. You know, chasers are people that chase the people down in the streets in their cars and at the red lights, going, "Oh my God!" Sticking stuff in their windows, and, and you know, what I mean, that's mm-hmm. the weird stuff. Mm-hmm. That's the weird. That's, mm-hmm. You see videos on that all the time. That's 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 the that's the that's the thing I don't ever want to ever be. You know. Right. And um, I, I saw in the chat, uh, they were asking about this, the a white IC title you have back there. I know who's assigned by. Um, and yeah. I remember when you got that thing and I actually have one as well. Yeah. Um, but mine's mine. I have the white IC with the WWF logo signed by Shawn Michaels. Yours is the white IC signed by uh, Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels. That's sick. So he, he, he won up me. He won up me on that one with the autographs there. Um, so that, that's really cool. Um, Sean Michaels was, things. what's up, God? I have two autographs to show you. I got from this company called Lilo, uh, multi-props. Uh, they have like, oh, yeah, they, show me. they have a Facebook group. Uh, one of them, I think they're both really unique. One of them is, is going to make you go, what? And, uh, this one right here is just kind of cool to me. Cause I love, I love me my nineties martial art movies. And this person was supposed to be at dragon fest a couple times throughout the years, but I, he never ended up showing up, but I got a laser disc. Signed by Sasha Mitchell from Kickboxing. Oh my God, Cody's gonna freak out when he sees that in here, <laughs> dude. Where did you see Sasha? And plus, and number two, that's a great looking picture right there. And it has David Sloan as the character name and everything. Where did you see him? I didn't. I told you I got this from this company called. Uh, oh, oh, oh! You got it from a company. Now, is that company selling those, or is is the signing over? And because sometimes they have back stock, you know. Uh, well, I, I got it from them. They, they had like an auction on their, um, Facebook group at uh, a couple, a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. But, uh, that is killer dude. Yeah. But like they threw in some cool, they threw in some cool stuff when I got what, that. What'd you uh, get? This next thing. I probably, I'm, I'm, I'm making a video on this on my YouTube channel too, whenever I get a chance to, but this one right here. I, oh no. Mm, Mm. Academy Award winner. Oh, just won an Academy Award this year. Oh, for his uh, portrayal of the whale. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Look at that! Oh. Wow, that's a that's nice. The way it's signed in the mouth like that—that that looks that pops a lot. That's awesome. No, I know. I was just like, this is badass to the max. That is cool, dude. Yeah. Especially because he's 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 really hot right now, so it's good to have that. Yeah, that movie is that, that movie The Whale is super depressing, especially to a person like myself. But goddamn, I have it right over here, and it's on my to watch list, but I haven't popped it in yet. Yeah, I saw I saw it in theaters, and I was just like, wow, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's rad, dude, for sure. Uh, those both of those items are rad. That 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 kickboxing one is. I know. He's killer, dude. That and I love that image too. I wonder if that's the movie poster or if that was just the laser disc print I because think, that's a real cool. Yeah, this is. It has a. It's the same picture as the DVD that I had. Oh, is yeah, yeah. I, I even had this actor on my video once, and it's like one of the one of my biggest videos I have on my channel, uh, with uh, Michael Kissy who played Tong Po in the movies. Yeah, mm. I, I wish I had this at the time. He, I would have had him sign it and stuff, but he, he signed like my old like D, you know uh, like DVD of it. But if I, ever, if I ever see him again, because I have his phone number or his WhatsApp phone number, so maybe, <laughs> maybe, but maybe I can contact him in the future. But so, so it's always weird when certain actors or celebrities like I have their phone numbers or contacts, and I'm just like, and and what? What am, what am right. I? Gonna, like I'm gonna I can message them, but say what? You're not like Wes. You don't call Eli Roth every two months or anything like that, right? Yeah. Leave no. him voicemails and stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> He, he yeah. does. He, call, he calls him, texts him. <laughs> no <Yeah>. responses. <laughs> no, but like I said, uh, it's, it's really weird when certain actors are like, hey, let's exchange numbers. I'm like, okay, at the time, this is cool. 
then at the same time, I'm like, what am I gonna do? Like, hey man, what are you, right. what, are you, what, are you what are you eating tonight? Like, <laughs> did you say you want to you want to meet for lunch? I'm gonna bring five things I want you to sign, and we'll get a burger. No, but, like <laughs> I I I actually built up enough nerve to you know text Edward Furlong uh, a couple months Ooh. ago, like, hey, would you like to come out with me and my friends to get a cigar? Even though I'm not a smoker or anything, my friends like to go to cigar lounge. I just like to go to hang out with them and stuff, and you know, like you know, not even for a video. Like, want to come hang out with us, mess around or whatever. He's like, oh yeah, man. Let me see what I, you know, that you know, he he didn't he didn't end up doing it, but uh, I'm always like, you know, he's like, hit me up again in the next couple of weeks when I'm back from because he's always doing a convention or doing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, what am I gonna say next? You know what I mean? Like, well, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be yeah, that that's weirdo, cool, though, man. I don't want to be that weirdo that's always saying something and then like not nothing's happening, you know? Bro, put it this way: if that dude didn't give you his number, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things. Like these people, if they actually give you their number. Unless you found it and you're calling him, right? But if oh, he yeah, gave no. it to you, like, yeah. I, I wouldn't hesitate about texting it or whatever because it's like he would have never gave you his personal phone if he didn't want if he didn't want you calling him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, but there's it's no weird. way to me. It's weird. I'm just like they're cool and everything, but like, what do I say and not look stupid or look right, too? Right, you know, right, like, right. I don't. I don't know. But I think what you said was probably good, and I bet he would probably come out if he was if he was available. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I just don't know what to say next. You know, for the times I'm free to do something, and I don't know. Yeah, check this. Check this. Uh, the comment out. So, Bog Zombie said he ran into Pat Morita at Payless Shoes once. Dude, Ooh. how sick would that be? Jeez, you don't have a Pat Morita auto over there, do you? No, sir. Uh, neither do I. But I, I've, um, I've seen one available in one of these groups, but it was like expensive as hell, and almost like and it's, it's on the next Karate Kid one. It's the only one I ever saw. Yeah, that would uh, that would be cool. Now, how about I see people over here talking about wrestling stuff, and you know how cool would it be to get Brett on a winged eagle? I I would love to have I I would love to have a winged eagle and have someone like that sign it, uh, for sure. Now, I was also thinking too, like how killer would it be to you have to fork over the money, get a WCW big gold, but then have Arquette sign it? How sick would that be? That would be cool. I just think like I'm so into like unique pieces like that. That is like you know, so not the norm. Like, for instance, I'm trying to think, there's a couple that I have where I walked up to the actor or whatever, and they were like, oh, you want me to sign this? Like, even the Crush, this Crush poster I have right here, yeah, signed by Alicia Silverstone, like, there was nobody in line with that, with a Crush item. You know what I mean? No, like, all, like, clueless and stuff, huh? Yeah, so, like, I'm always about doing, the, like, the more obscure kind of things, um, which, again, I think is pretty rad. Like, I don't know if you saw my video last night, but I ended up just picking up the one sheet for suburban commando like the original poster like yeah. i mean if i was to ever meet hogan again and have him sign that like it might be it would just be such a killer item to have you know but um i think we should definitely come back and, and do another autograph show because it seems like you know we have a lot to talk about when it comes to that but yeah. um i want to kind of transition into you know on youtube you also um kind of created the wet movie crew which was a big thing for a while where you had multiple people kind of doing guest appearances on your show. You kind of had like a little group going and a lot of those people's, a lot of those people branched off and started their own thing. Yeah. Like Danny, right? and kind of, originally like, Danny, the sentence stalker wasn't doing videos for the first like two years or more of us doing right. stuff, stuff with them. And I kept like, I kept, I kept doing it. I'm like, just do it. He's like, dude, I, I kind of want to do it. I'm, then do it. Just do it. Come on, man, let's do it. You know? And then he, he finally did. And it's kind of cool. Yeah, you know, and he was someone that I really gravitated towards. When he came out, I, I felt like he came out pretty hot. And, like, he's still doing stuff. And, I mean, Danny's always fun to watch. Like, I mean, he's not doing as many movie-related reviews as he used to. He's more just doing a lot of, like, vlogging and stuff now. But he, very entertaining. And he's he always goes to some really cool spots. Like, he knows, like, you know, where to go, like, when it comes to just cool different places. So, yeah. if you guys haven't checked out Cinderstalker, he's another one that... um that is that I had watched since he started, which again was probably forever ago as well. And after his, you, obviously. His his newest video is kind of popping right now. One of his newest videos that he did going to a haunted tunnel that I did with him too a long time ago. And he ran into oh, a he big, went he ran into he went big, back to that tunnel. Yeah, and he ran into a big YouTuber that um that has like what six million subscribers and stuff. And that YouTuber was making a video at the same time. So his newest video has like sixty thousand views or fifty thousand views to it in like two days. Really. So, uh, and he's getting he's getting a lot of subscribers too from him. I think that's kind of rad. Even though the YouTuber didn't really promote him, it's just kind of getting recommended to people. I think it's kind of cool. But that's the only thing I don't like about like YouTubers these days, like the big, big, massive ones. Like if you if say you have a random guy, you're doing you know it's in your video, 
just put put his link down there. Say hey, or right. have, him, have him say something for like ten seconds. Hey, my name's Sinistalker. Thanks for watching. You know, like something shit. Of course. You know, like I, I mean, it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt that guy, right? Like no. I'm not saying you know, the guy's I mean, a, I'm not saying the guy's a bad guy for not doing it, but it's just kind of like it's just the kind of the thing to do, you know. I know you're I, I don't know. I agree because again, it, there's only so many people in the world doing this, right? So like if you run into somebody that's doing this, I think it, it would just be out of respect to kind of just throw them a little bit of a pop there because again, it's one of those things like I even talk about when it comes to what I do for work. Like, um, you know, there's a point in time in my career where I did a lot of managing with with fitness coaches and stuff and if I get messages from people saying like, Hey man, like, you know, you really, you know, got my career off and you really helped me, you know, make a full-time gig out of this. Like that's so rewarding. And if in the same boat, like if you can help out somebody else in turn, it's always one of two things. If that person pops off, they're going to always remember what you did for them. Right? Like that's, that's a positive thing. And at the same time, like it, it, it should make you feel good if you're able to kind of help somebody start out because everybody's been there at one point. You know what I mean? Like, I was there. You've been very generous to me. And, you know, since, since I started this, um, with like, you know, wearing the t-shirts at conventions and, you know, giving me shout outs. Like, I mean, you did, there's no reason that you ever had to do that. You didn't know me from a hole in the wall, really. Like, I mean, we've chatted before I had a YouTube page, like on and off before about different things here and there, but, you know, obviously you knew me more because you were really big watching dead pit and yeah, that's then how I kind of came in it. and, and uh, so, you know, I think that it's just really, it's it's just been really cool that like people like them and you have, have, you know, shouted me out and stuff during, you know, me starting out. Like if that, that obviously helped, you know, get eyeballs on me. So again, like, like I said, then I have you on here because it's, it's an appreciation thing as well of like, you know, wow, you, you've, you've done a lot for me and I didn't, you never had to. Yeah. No, we're, we're all just collectors, man. We're all just nerds, you know, when it, when it comes to all this stuff. So if it's somebody that I'm watching and I like that, if I, you know, like that somebody, like even like my buddy Alex Labor and, uh, you know, from, from like, you know, the Alex Labor channel, like he, he's my boy, you know? And uh, at the time when he was first starting out, I just started talking about his YouTube channel and it blew his mind that I did. I'm just like, dude, I'm just a regular, you know, regular schmuck. that's just, you know, talking about people that I like watching, you know, it's just, it's just kind of like the thing is to do if you're a YouTuber. Talk about other ones that you like to watch, even if they're bigger than you or smaller than you. It doesn't really matter, you know, because we're all just in here because we like talking about what we love. I agree. And at the end of the day, no matter if you promote somebody or not, the people that watch are the ones that are going to dictate what happens. Right. So you could promote me all I want. But if your people come over to check me out and be like, ah, I'm not just jiving with that guy, then it's not going to then they're not going to watch me. Right. And vice versa. So what is it going to really hurt? you know, to do that kind of stuff, because again, people are going to end up hanging out and making up their own mind with, you know, who, who they kind of jive with as far as, you know, what they're into or their opinions or whatever it may be. But yeah, I'm totally down with that. And I think that more people should be open to that because at the end of the day, if for wh whatever reason you help somebody else out that may be starting out and, you know, they just do or hit the right thing, they can return the favor to you at some point if that, if ever needed as well. You know, if you're the type of guy that's like shunning everybody away yeah. Then all of a sudden you're looking for help or, or whatever it may be. They might be like, yeah, sorry, buddy. You know what but, I mean? Like, yeah, but there, there's, there has been times where, you know, at the beginning of certain people's YouTube channels, I was there, you know, talking about them and videos and, you know, different things like that, you know, just, you know, not trying to, you know, think I'm better than anybody or anything, just like talking about people's videos, but there's been one or two people that I've done that and promoted and talked about that blew up on YouTube compared to, you know, what I what I'm at now and stuff, and when that happened, they don't talk to me anymore. They're like, who, who? or like leave me on red on their messages. I'm like, I hate that shit. You know, like, I, awesome, I, 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 and, and I'm not even trying to ask for anybody to promote me. I'm just like, hey man, what you been up to? You know, I'm like nothing, then, then nothing. It's just kind of like, oh, right, that's how it is. Okay, and and you know what? Like sometimes I think when it comes down to it, it's like even as content creators, like if I ask somebody to be on the show. And they, for whatever reason, just don't feel like they jive with me, like not in a personal way, but more of like, eh, you know, that's just not kind of my content or whatever and not do it. Like, I'm fine with that. Right. Like, it, it's all good. Like, mm -hmm. it's it, it. I understand. Right. If not, everybody's going to uh, jive with everybody else. But, you know, like you said, obviously, some kind of response, at least, you know, would be nice, you know, and it, it, and it is what it is, because trust me, like to do some of these shows, like I've, you know, reached out to people before and not got responses and. You know, people have actually that 
you know, didn't come on, you know, we're nice about it or whatever. And, and it, it's expected and it's, but at the same time, you know, you know, I hate to even bring this up right now, but yeah. I'm going to do it anyways, because I, I have no issues with the guy, right? Like me, I don't have issues with the guy. I know people that do have issues with him, but I don't, but like, let's, let's bring up Sean. Okay. Yeah. For instance, I'm going to bring up Sean. Now, the only reason I'm going to bring up Sean is because I was a big fan of Sean. I had actually met Sean at a convention when he was living here in the East Coast. We were both at Monster Mania. He was there with his brother and his dad. And, you know, I knew him and from from watching him. So he did a picture. And this was like, you know, obviously this was early in his, his YouTube career, which is all well and good. But, you know, never once has, you know, we, we follow each other on instagram or whatever like it is what it is and you know never once has he commented on a post liked the post anything for me not saying that i expect it i don't but when all of a sudden he he needs he wants funding for a movie he'll message me about 20 times about it now if let's say per se he was not he was somebody that i was cool with not just when he wants something then my answer would be very different towards him and i have no problem with him personally like i think it's fine but i just think if you're in that situation that he's in where he you know could use the support and help then you know being a little bit more involved with the community around you on a regular basis rather than when you need something i think is 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 important and you know i have like i said it's nothing against them but at the same time i'm professional and nice of course but you know, I'd be more apt to be like, here you go, man. Like, here, here's here's a little bit. Have good luck, blah, 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 blah. But I don't, I, he, I, I he's never interacted with me otherwise. You know what I mean? So, uh, okay, look, you, everyone knows that's watching this. If they've been in, you know, watching my videos at all, they, they know I've been good with him. I've had troubles with him, you know, throughout the years with different things. And, uh, you know, he, all, he, he, all around, he's a, he's a good dude. And I, I I'm always going to love him, you know, being a, a, a friend and stuff. You know, but he does have people now um, in his ear when it comes to trying to make some of these movies that he's doing. And uh, I can't say I can't say anything bad, but it, I don't think it's his idea to be me messaging people saying, hey, I need your help to make this movie. You know, when you want to donate to this and that or whatever, because I've, I've gotten the same message. You know what I mean? The same like like message like it sounds like it's a personal message but he's actually sending it to everybody on his facebook or instagram and things like that and it wasn't him it was other people that got into his head that made him think that's the way he has to do it to make to make these uh to make these movies is it right i don't know it's just the way it is and i find it to be kind of like i i talked to him about it. i'm like dude what the hell is this you know because there's mm -hmm. ever since then there's other people that are making these uh, independent movies trying to raise them on uh, raise money on Kickstarter, or Indiegogo, that are doing the same thing now. That are messaging me with voice messages, going, "Hey, uh, I would love to. You know, would you like to be a producer or be in my movie? It's you know, donate this much, you know, whatever." And I'm like, "This is the way the world is now." You know, when it comes right. to trying, to, I don't know. And, I, and it's hard, man. It's really it's really hard in multiple ways because having access to people all over the world very easily now which ne never happened before things like kickstarters and stuff can work right like but for me it's one of those things where number one if you're a friend of mine and i know that you're trying to do something a good product and stuff then i'm going to be there to support all day like for instance i'm going to i'm going to say two things so this i don't think ended up happening i don't think huh. so um if you guys don't know um deandra over at sassy sledgehammer she's someone that i have known per se in the community for a very long time someone that i've got to know a little bit more through youtube she's been on my show a couple times she's shouted me out in a couple videos that she's done so we've been very very cool uh with each other now she was on my show because her and um you know, final girl, uh, they, they came on and, you know, they were talking about the Fred heads documentary and she announced that she was going to direct her own documentary called kinder trauma. Now that ended up not working out for whatever reasons. I think the, the, the Kickstarter failed or something like that. It didn't hit its goal. Yeah. But I, I was down to support that because number one, I'm very cool with Deandra and I respect her and I know that she's, She's going to do the right thing and this, that, and this. And I, but at the same time, I also thought that that documentary that she was doing 
really resonated with me. And I was like, man, I D like, I'll do whatever I can to be involved in this and to do whatever I said. I, I want to see this thing come out. I think it's a real cool idea and I'm, I'm going to back you all day because you know, you're, you're, you've been great to me. Right. So that was a no brainer for me. If someone comes to me and says, Hey, check out my movie, I'll check it out. But if I don't know you and that movie doesn't do anything for me, then, you know, if you're asking me for money, it might not happen. Not because I'm a dick, but you can't give money to everyone. No. It's just not going to happen that way. Right. But like, you know, people that I know that are that are working on something and if they need help or they ask, like, I'll be more apt to, to do it. But like, I, that's the one thing about about Sean is that like, I just think that, like you said, sometimes it's probably not him, but it's easy in the world now to be able to be like, well, if I've got 30,000 followers, yeah, someone's going to give me money. You know, someone's going to help me out. Right. Yeah. Um, and the same thing, like with myself, like I'm an I do online fitness. Do I come on here and try to sell people online fitness every day? Sure. If all of a sudden somebody comes to me and they said, hey, man, I'd love to get on your program, blah, 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 blah. Like, then let's talk about it. And I'm here to help. And I appreciate you watching me on here. But like, I'm not messaging everybody on Instagram being like, buy my program or whatever. Like, it's just it's just not who I am. You know, if but, someone needs me, I'm there. Right. Like, I get it. And you need to know, like, there's a lot of scammers out there, too, that they're that on these like, Indiegogo sites and everything like that. Sean, with the money that he's making, is actually putting them into these movies. You know what I mean? He's not taking people's money and like pocketing things. Right. Of course. Like oh, yeah. Of course. I, 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 I get I, it. And I know people that do that. I've known people that have done that stuff. And I can't, I don't want to name any names, but like, it's not right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm, I'm never going to work with those kind of people that do that. But just know if you do, if you have donated to his, his movies, he's, it's actually going towards the actual product that he's doing. Yeah. And you know what? You got to give him credit though, because he was someone that started reviewing movies in his parents' house. He decided to get up and move to California to to pursue other things. Mm -hmm. he, he's done it. He's doing it. Like, I mean, you can't, you can't, you know, I can't say anything negative about that. Like, I'm big on, like, taking action, right? Like, I'm always about action. I don't care if it comes from a physical standpoint yep. or this or YouTube or whatever it is. It's like, if you're going to do something, like, put the steps towards to do it. And that's the one thing I will give him credit when he wanted to lose weight. He lost it. And he kept it off. Like good for him. He stuck with it. Uh, he wanted to make movies. Great. Like he's doing it. Like these are things like nothing happens if you don't work towards it. So I give him all the credit in the world, yep. but you know, that was my only issue is that, you know, I've, if I had no, if I knew him more then you know, I'd be more apt to it. Don't worry. I've checked out his stuff and, you know, just to see if it was something. And I would love to help the guy out, but it's just one of those things where, you know, when all of a sudden somebody doesn't know where you existed and then all of a sudden they, they're they talking to you like you guys have been friends for the last 10 years. I get it's it. almost it's a little bit odd. Right. Like for 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 me, dude, I, I, I don't want to be a jerk either. You know, I'm a nice guy, so I want to be respectful and stuff. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I don't even know how this conversation started. But anyway, um, that's yeah. kind of how, you know, I feel when it when it comes to that. No, I get it. I get your feeling when it comes to him uh, and that because there's been a lot of other people you know, throughout the year, the last couple of years of him making these movies that he's doing that have been messaging me going, Brendan, have you seen this? He's messaging me acting like he cares and likes me and stuff and blah, 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 this and that. I'm like, I, I, I can't say anything about the way he's going about it. That's not my, that's not my thing, but me and him are cool. I got to, I hung out with him at Monster Palooza a week or so ago and we, you know, he's messed around for a while. So he's, he's still my boy. And, uh, you know, I don't know all the people that he's dealing with with these movies and stuff, so I can never, I don't know what to say about all that. But as me and him, we seem to be okay right now. We're cool. But he's, uh, you know, and he's probably an all right guy. Like, I mean, when it comes to that, like, he's probably fine. I know there was some issues with him and Dead Pit. Obviously, there was, there was a little bit of history there. You know, obviously, you guys had your own thing. He's, you know, I've never talked to him. So to, to me, it hasn't been anything that I've had to. You know, I can't say anything bad about him. Like I've never talked to him and stuff. Yeah, but no, you know, no, no, but no I one, get it. Like no one's perfect. When you, right? But here's the thing: when you, when you are, when you're bogged down to make something that you're of that you have only dreamed about, you need to find money somewhere. I get it, right? Like I get it. Mm -hmm. But I think also too, being a little bit more, spending more time in the community with people that could help you out, I think is probably something you know that you should consider. I think at the end of the day. Um, you know, but everybody's busy. I get it. But anyway, like, well, speaking of that, you had people like, um, Danny, who's started with you and then he kind of went off and did his thing and he's doing his thing. And, uh, guys, Danny is actually somebody who 
is supposed to be on this season of Rad Company. But, you know, dates with him has, has been scarce due to personal things he's he's doing right now. And, you know, we're, we're working on on getting yep. this to happen. But the dates has just been an issue. But uh, he's somebody, again, that that I've talked to behind the scenes for quite a while. It, it'll and, happen. Uh, then, then, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he will. I know he will. And I, I know there's things going on there that uh, he's trying to figure out, which is which is cool. But it'd be cool to have him on and kind of you know talk a little about him and his backstory and what he's up to now. And uh, the same thing with like somebody else that's going to be on this channel very soon is someone who I first saw from your videos, and that's Jose Master Chaos. Yeah, man, that's my boy. Uh, he's going to be on on this channel very soon. We're working on dates as well. He's got a lot going on right now, so yeah, like he's, he's making two movies back to back. Yeah, he's he, he's he, done. He, he just finished making a movie called The Exorcist uh, with uh, Doug Bradley, dude. That's insane to me. That is insane. And then he's doing uh, Puppet Master, right? Yeah, one of the Puppet Master was Leech Woman. Is that what he's... Yeah. Leech Woman, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's... Again, he's someone that I first saw from you. Like, he was somebody that I used to see pop in your videos. So when he kind of started to do his own thing, I went over there and started watching him before I did a YouTube channel itself. So I've always kind of knew who he was because... Hey, that's that's the guy from you know from Brendan's videos, right? So and he's you know he, he, he's kind of suffering from the same thing, uh, you know. We all do at at some point, uh, you know, the whole YouTube game. You know what I mean? Like not mm. not getting enough views, not really growing, and you know, kind of like on the fence of like, should I even stay? You know, that kind of jazz. You know what I mean? Because I know you've been in that boat for a little bit too, sometimes. And uh, yeah, yeah. All, all of us had that. All of us had that at some point, some point or another. Yeah, and I'm sure the more the longer you do it, the more it happens because again, it, it is it's a hard thing. Like I to be honest, like this is still one of those things in my life that it still feels exciting and fresh because even though I've been doing it two and a half years, it's it feels new, right? Like because I it still feels exciting because I have so many different areas going on. We got the rad pack thing going on, we have the podcast going on, I'm going on other people's shows, I'm you know, I've got dead pit stuff going on, I'm calculating out you know, my next couple months of like videos. So to me, I'm still, it's still really exciting to me because I can be super creative. I can map out almost, I hate saying this. It feels like sometimes like it's a small part-time job, like how I'm handling the channel. But my biggest bummer was when I was demonetized last month because it was just out of nowhere. When all of a sudden I felt like there was like all this momentum. I saw like two months, three months in advance of everything I was doing. And then all of a sudden I get that hammered down and I was like, uh Oh, what do I do? Yep. What should I do? You know, and I thought like, again, my channel was dead um, for this month because, you know, with me deleting videos, being demonetized, you know, kind of in a weird limbo period with YouTube right now where, you know, my stuff wasn't going to be out in the algorithm. I don't know what they call that. Like they have a name for it. But what's kept me going is everybody in the chat right now. I did that one video. People shared it around like that's really kept my my channel afloat. And you know, I couldn't be more than grateful. And it kind of felt like it gave me a new life to a point where it's like, if this thing goes through and on Wednesday, when I, when I press that button and it comes back and says, you're back in the game, like it's all systems go. If it doesn't, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to leave, but I got to try to figure out maybe a just in way. And not that I need like, Oh, I was making all this money or this, that, and this to me, it's one of those things where when I see a roof and I, and I'm hitting it and there's no ceiling to break through, that's just, it's deflating to me. You know, yeah. that's the thing is I just feel like you're doing all this work, but the reward is not is not there, you know, from that end ever. Then mm -hmm. I feel like my creativity is going to kind of suffer from that because I'm going to be like, I'm putting in all this energy when I could be focusing more on my online fitness business, when I could be focusing more on my in-person fitness business where I'm putting all this effort to this. I would just rather just do the podcast on the side, you know, and, and just have that be the only thing I'm worried about. But, you know, I I'm anyway. I, I watch you and Dead Pit guys stuff all the time, right? And I I get so like depressed sometimes watching watching you guys because I wish I can talk about things as much as you guys do. Like I don't like I don't have like the biggest vocabulary in the world when it comes to like, talking about movies. Like I always want to like sound like how I how I watch certain people talk about certain things. I always want to like sound like certain you know like like I know what the hell I'm talking about. Like, I know I I know I know I know what I'm talking about, but I don't know how to verbalize certain things you know what i mean like i wish i can do stuff like you guys do like have like a topic kind of show like like a whole show just dedicated to talking about you know like tom savini effects or you know creep show movies and stuff like that mm -hmm. my mind is so like all over the place i'm always like i don't know how to explain like scatterbrain like i never really focus on like something like that like how you guys do all the time 
Well, I think what helps is a couple things. You're always going to have somebody kind of steering the ship, right? So like when we do it with Dead Pit, Wes is the one steering the ship because he's been doing this the longest and he's really good at that. So like, therefore that helps us not feel so scatterbrained because he's kind of like laying the groundwork and then we just kind of bounce off each other. I think what else too, when it comes to at least Dead Pit and I, and I'm kind of trying to take this same mindset to the rad pack and stuff where it's like you know when we do the shows like we're all the host but i'm trying to kind of just steer the ship a little bit so we're not all just at that once right so um i've learned a lot from watching wes do that and also too is like we're not really crazy reviewers in the sense where you're watching my videos i'm kind of giving you points like i liked it or i didn't like it it was fun or it wasn't fun or here's what i liked about here's where i didn't i'm not the type of reviewer and neither is dead pit where we're getting into, you know, the, the cr- critiquing of like, you know, the quality of, of, you know, this is how many, you know, here's the Atmos track and here's like, we don't talk in those terms or like the cinematography of this, or, you know, we don't get that deep. We're very like straightforward, like yeah. with like little things. So don't overthink it basically, because we don't talk like that where there's a lot of other YouTubers out there that'll, that are a lot more sophisticated when it comes to how they're explaining stuff. Yeah. Like, like, people and, like, like Chris Stuckman and shit. I watch, I'm like, Oh shit. You know? Right. Because he's, he's in that world, right. Where he's dealing with that stuff probably for work and all this other stuff where I'm in a world and I take like what I do for work and fitness. Like, I can talk to you guys about, you know, different parts of the shoulder, like, um, but I don't use that kind of terminology with regular people because all I have to say is, um, you know, all right, lift your, lift your shoulder up like this. I don't have to say like, well, let your rhomboids kick in. Like people don't know that. Right. So what I can say to get someone to understand it fast and get them to resonate, then I kind of use that same thing to hear is it's like, I get to talk to people like, like I'm just talking to you, like a real person, not like, I want to show how much I know, right? Like, I don't care about that. It's like, I need them to be entertained and connect with me. Not like, Hey, I like this guy because he knows a lot, right? Like yeah. that, that's only going to get you so far. I feel like, no, I know what you mean. You know? But when it comes to YouTube and stuff, I always get messages. I get messages sometimes from people like, Brendan, what, what makes you stay, you know, doing all this stuff? You know what I mean? Like what's what, what, what keeps you, keeps you going? And I say, like you said, the people in the chat, the people that watch and support the videos by commenting and liking and, you know what I mean? Like just saying, you know, cool stuff and like nice stuff, uh, positive messages and things like that. And at the same time, if it wasn't for me doing these videos, you know, I got to be honest. When, when I first started, when I first started my YouTube channel, um, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I didn't, I barely, I didn't even know how to upload a video. You know what I mean? My first short film I made, the Night Owls one. Uh, I didn't even know how to edit stuff. I was I was I was learning how to edit on you know my Mac computer that I had, but it was uh, a, a John Travolta's brother, Joey Travolta, was I had a, a he was teaching me how to edit and stuff, and uh, you know he's like this is this is what you do and this is how you would upload a video, click click you know and this this and that. So because I like I said I was always in special ed, so I, there's different things I kind of struggle with. And, you know, it was Joey, Joey Travolta was one of the ones that kind of got me, you know, set up on how to how the editing system works on iMovie and how to upload a video and things like that. And one of the main things that's keeping me going uh, on, on some of the on, on these videos, like I said, with the people that watch and support the videos and, uh, you know, that and like celebrities that I grew up watching know me because of the YouTube stuff. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? I'm like, what? And you know, I know that we're all just people that, and if it wasn't for the YouTube, I probably wouldn't have the job I have right now. You know what I mean? Because the, the my, my my boss is like, you know, been watching the videos for a long time. So it's like the YouTube channel, like it means more to me than some people would, would understand. You know what I mean? Maybe they understand a little bit more by watching this, you know? I mean, because you've been doing it so long, I mean, it really is part of your life it's part of you it's 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 an identity i think that you've kind of created is is with because like you said you got the job because somebody who watches you had an opening and they knew you were looking and said well he lives here like right so like that's kind of how that went down right yeah yep and, th- sure, and think I, about I, that like think, what i'm sure i'm sure fonzie regrets that shit every day now but you know what, dude? Like, like, listen. The, the world that we're in now, the world that we're in now, and I think it's it's even going to get more as we get going down the road. 
it's a lot of it is going to be a who you know, right? Like, and it still is like, even, even when it comes to YouTube, even when it comes to getting, you know, screeners, or maybe somebody wants you to, to do something for their documentary or have, you know, say something for this, like, it's all on who, you know, it's not going to be like, think about all the applications you filled out. Yeah. And all it took was somebody that watches your content to be like, come in and talk to me. And then you're working. Right. Like, like, like dude, I didn't even, ha I didn't even have to fill out an application. Like he did it for me. You know what I mean? But, like, like it, that, <laughs> It's wild to think of like, that's how the world is now is it's like, there's so much reach that it's really becoming a world of who, you know, and how much reach you have. And I'm going to tell you uh, a prime example of when it, when I really re realized how important things like, a YouTube and a social media was like, I was always doing social media for my business, for, for my fitness, um, for, for years. And I was doing videos every day on Instagram, talking about exercises or showcasing exercise or whatever it may be motivation. i would put a quote up and it grew slowly, you know, it was growing a little bit, but when the pandemic hit, cause I've been doing fitness training for like 18 years, so when the pandemic hit, I was like, uh-oh, what the heck's going to happen now? So I ended up buying all this fancy equipment. That's how I started YouTube. I got the lights, this, that, that. Because I had to start training people virtually. And then I you know, had my online business kind of created from that. Now, I didn't know what was going to go on with my in-person gig at that point. I didn't know if my gig in person was over. Mm. I didn't know if the, uh, if the fitness industry in person was over. Because we didn't know what was going on here. So I remember a company put something out online and it said, looking for virtual coaches, looking for virtual people that could teach a group class and virtually blah, blah, blah. Hey, Gary, so I put uh, in a, I, Gary, give me know. a few moments. Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to use the restroom for a second. I, uh, I'm, I can still hear you, but just give me a second. Go, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the chat and then I'll talk about it. Sorry. Is that a train by the way? A train? So no. Every time I, Oh, I was going to say every time I'm, I stream with people, there's always trains going by. Um, I'll go back to the chat right now while wet movie goes and uh, gets wet there. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm telling you, it's probably having YouTube on a resume now is probably not that uncommon where the world's going. Crazy enough. Um, hold on. Let me see. I'm going to go back up. Oh, Hunter's Blood is a good movie, man. That's another one that needs um an upgrade what up dude so again we still have 80 people in here i know we went over we said we were going to be on here for an hour so i'm gonna we're gonna close this out within the next 10 minutes uh but if you haven't hit a like on this hit a like right now if you're not subscribed to me and you're coming over from wet movie side give me a sub over there if you're enjoying the content if you've if you're not subscribed to Wet Movie One, go give him a sub as well at Wet Movie One on YouTube. Um, I will have these links in the description box after the show. So if you're catching it on the replay, uh, his description will be there for his channel. But Wet Movie One on YouTube and also Wet Movie Underscore One on Instagram if you want to check him out. But Sorry. I'm just going back to the chat. It's all good, man. We're gonna probably wrap it up in about ten because we actually went almost two hours, which is the longest rad company i've ever done so again because me and you can talk all night so it's yeah. just it's it's been it's been easy now basically what i was what i was trying to trying to talk about with the fitness thing and when i realized that how important having a big reach was turning into in the world now is i sent a resume into this company looking for online virtual fitness coaches got it got something back in you know in a couple of days they said hey saw your resume unbelievable experience it seems like you'd be somebody that can work with anybody, but unfortunately, your social media does not have enough followers to be considered for this job. Mm. Think about that. Now, this is coming from somebody who does this and has been doing this online, doing classes, teaching people from the age of 10 to 80 something years old and everything in between from high school to college athletes to you know stay at home moms to businessmen to grandparents like people with i've had i had a client for four years with cerebral palsy like i've done it i've gotten people from busted bone uh busted joints to back to health like post pt like tons of stuff right so the fact that i was told that i didn't qualify for this position due to my social media following got me to realize like how important 
this realm is going to probably be in the next however many years. It is that it was is, the moment it is strange that I realized that. Yeah, like you can be really good at something, but if you don't have an online thing, like come on now. So what makes me think about it is like, so they're going to toss me off to the side and be like, okay, we're not going to hire you. But if I came in and I had a ton of followers and like I had never taught a class in my life and I said, hey, I like working out. They would have hired me before they would have hired me after with 18 years experience. Like that's what's scary because imagine putting someone with a big following in front of a large audience of all these different people that you wouldn't know how to customize things to fit everybody. That's a sc That's scary when it comes to fitness or any other type of job where you have to actually do something and know that you're going to do it right. Right. Like that's, that, you know kinda, how, that scares me. Yeah. It scares me too. Cause I'm at a job right now that I didn't know a damn thing about, you know what I mean? I still, I'm still struggling with it. And I'm <laughs> kind of, I'm kind of surprised that my boss hasn't like said, Hey, get out of here. <laughs> so you don't, know? Keep, like, don't keep saying that he's, he might be still watching. Oh, he knows. He knows. Don't, don't keep putting yourself down. You know what no, I mean? No, Talk me yourself up. Tell him how great you're doing. Oh no, he knows. He knows what he, he he can tell if it's something good or bad yeah. going on, because it's like Come it's on. like it's like the maintenance game. You have to like fix things and try different things, and you know, like, you know, I'm still I'm still struggling with it. But uh, I also got employee of the month this month, which is kind look of at that. So how how can you be doing so bad? What was that? Just like a was that just like I feel bad gift for you? I'm, that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> that's what no. I'm guessing. But, but dude, I, you know what? You look, look at this from a positive standpoint. Everything you're learning here can probably translate in a more positive way in other areas of your life. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be a bump in the road, but once you get used to all that and you start learning these new skills, these are skills that you can probably take for the rest of your life that I, you know, if you're learning how to like fix things and do this and do that, that's probably stuff that I don't even know how to do. And I have, you know, that I'm trying to run like a household over here, yeah. you know? So, you know, look at it that way as as much as it's a struggle now, everything's a struggle, but once you get good at it, it's, it's going to be something that you're going to benefit forever. No, I know. It's just one of those things. Like I, 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 I overthink things too much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like my, my boss knows. He, he knows. The, you know, he knows how I'm struggling with things. <laughs> but man, um, anything else you want to, you know, shout out, talk about before we close out? Um, because you know, people in the chat, if you guys have any questions for Brandon, now's your time because we're gonna probably be on here another five, and then we're gonna bounce out of here for the night. But just want to let you guys know. Uh, that are that are watching. Uh, I do have a new video up that I put up today. Uh, you know, hanging out with Thomasy e. and Nicholas, the kid from Rookie of the Year, American Pie. And uh, if you watch that video, I'm doing a giveaway. So you have to watch that video to find out what you know where the giveaway is going to be and what you guys what you're going to have to do. So I'm going to be you'll see. Um, let's just say if you watch, ever watched Rookie of the Year, I'm giving away an autographed baseball signed by him. And um, yeah, watch the video, give it a thumbs up, all that jazz, and uh, that's it. Check it out, please. Well, if you want to talk to the horror people out there, you got to go watch this video because he's with the dude from Halloween Resurrection. So yeah. you have to go over there and check it out if you love Halloween. Yeah, yeah the horror people. He gets stabbed. <laughs> he, gets, he gets killed by Michael Myers. So, yeah. So if that if you're in a Halloween, you got to go check out that video because he's with one of the people from Resurrection. In there. I know Resurrection is not the best one in the franchise, but, <laughs> but still, my, my boy is in it. So, you know, what the hell? Uh, no, I, I totally, I totally agree. Um, see, look, see, people already see they love yeah. the resurrection. Uh, I think resurrection is going to be one of those that's like, watch, it's going to come around. You'll say people are going to like, it's going to get a little cult following going. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, but man, that's that is rad as hell, especially because again, it's somebody I met him. I remember, I think I told you mm. when I went to the, to the convention and, and saw the other guy for the for the Angus poster, I saw him and I yeah. actually said, I actually said that I knew you. Oh yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. Um so yeah, so I mean he he was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." So I mean, he he knows who you are for sure. You guys have done videos together multiple times. Oh, you're talking about Thomas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so he was at that so, same he was at the same con. Okay. He was and I brought you up to him and he knew exactly who you were. I said I said you yeah, actually you I he was right next to uh Chris yeah. Owens and and at the same little thing and I said, "Actually, do you want to know who I'm getting this autograph for?" Yeah. <laughs> And he's like, who? And I told him, and he's like, no way. I was like, yeah. I was like, what a small world, right? Yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom's so a good that guy. is cool. Yeah, definitely was a, was a nice guy. And he was actually talking to us because he had some resurrection stuff at his table as well. So we were talking about that. But it is cool to have a baseball uh, by him, you know, because again, that that movie was iconic for kids of the '90s for sure. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, even now, there's movies that he's in that I don't, not that many people talk about in this community anymore that I remember liking, like that, what's it called, the Kid in King Arthur's Court, and like, uh, you know, the you know the movies that he did when he's like going back in time and all that jazz. That, those were kind of fun. I don't know if I've ever seen those. Mm. King and a King and King Arthur's Court. Yeah, hmm. I mean, there were some there were some fun ones back then too. You know, it was like the same yeah, time, like same time as like the Big Green was coming out. Kid and King Arthur. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Big Green with the other guy from Sandlot, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, you, you probably recognize this poster, don't you? From back in the nineties. Oh, dude, you know what? I think I just saw that. Like, I was just scrolling through Disney Plus trying to find a movie earlier, and I think I scrolled right by that picture. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm gonna watch that now. Yeah. So wait, is he a baseball player in it too? Yeah. Oh, that's funny, man. I've never seen that movie. Surprisingly, that's interesting. I'm gonna give that a watch for sure. That's definitely up my alley. But um. Man, I want to get you back on the show, maybe even with Dead Pit and do an autograph too. Okay. Uh, maybe we can do like a simulcast kind of autograph too, because you've got so much new stuff. I can see it from here. I have problems. Um, <laughs> so I would love to see. I would love to see it. Now, let me ask you this. Is there any specific autograph grails that you want right now that you're like, it's attainable, but I just don't have it? Not that I can think of. I mean, there's a lot of I stuff mean, that I got out of the way, like that hoverboard, and you know, mm -hmm. si you know, signed by J Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. I don't know. I have a like, I, have I have Jamie Lee Curtis on that Halloween over there, but there's a whole bunch of whole bunch of different stuff that I don't know. Like, I have problems. I have to. <laughs> if I see something, I'm like, oh shit, I think I need this. <laughs> because again, we're not like for me at least, like, you know, I don't. Like, for instance, I talk about Ben Affleck. A lot of people would be like, I would die to get a Ben Affleck autograph. It's just yeah. not, it's cool, but like, I know. Even I'm sure you, you might think like a grail for you would be shit for someone else. Like, they were, you know, like you're not thinking you need, like, I mean, I would like a Tom Cruise one, actually. He's a big star. I would like yeah, a, yeah. you know, obviously I would like a lot of that because I do like him. For me, Arnold is one that I would love to have. Yeah. Um, that, that is definitely one that is in, you know, my realm of like, someday i hope to get it but i highly doubt i ever will because if he does a signing they say that he's like what 800 bucks or something like that it's gonna be more than that dude it'll be more than that so dude. i'm like, sure i'll never see that yeah i know but dude someone one of the one of the big grails i think i talked about before up here is a golden ticket signed by all five kids from the movie and a gene wilder pick uh, autograph picture above my uh I, see, I saw that when you unwrapped it or whatever. That Gene Wilder is killer, man. Yeah. So it's kind of, I kind of, I don't know. I got issues. But dude, we, but then everybody, myself and everybody in the chat have their own issues as well when it comes to collecting. And that's why we're all here. So if it's not posters or autographs, it's DVDs and, or, you know, other things like that toys, or, I mean, there's so much out there that we just have that collecting itch and fix that. You know, there's people everywhere. Like even baseball cards are back in now. Like, I mean, th that's a huge market. Like when I was a kid, there was card shops everywhere. Then they closed. You never saw another one. Dude, they're popping up around me again. I'm driving by and I'm like, oh, there's freaking card shops again. Like yep. that was so huge for me as a kid. And I'm not a collector of it now, but I'm almost afraid to walk in there and all of a sudden be like, I'm going to start collecting these again. I haven't watched baseball in like 20 years. You know there's what I'm two, saying? There's so two, There's two card shops that are uh, in driving distance of where I live. And one's in, one's in Burbank by my buddy Aaron's house, and the other one, and there's still two of them. It's kind of cool. Like all little mm. retro outside and everything. And what's up, Mel? I see you in the chat. <laughs> she said what's up earlier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys. So the next time you're gonna probably see me, unless I get on here this week and do some kind of hype video late at night, um, is going to be on Saturday for the Rad Pack one year super show. So you have to go subscribe to the Rad Pack on YouTube because that's where it's going to be. That's the video portion of the Rad Pack podcast. So go there, subscribe because the, the show on uh, Saturday night is going to be huge. There's going to be little cameos from people. There's going to be guests. There's going to be giveaways. So I would recommend going and being part of that chat. In order for you to do that, you're going to have to go subscribe and hit that notification so you know that that thing is coming. And Brendan, man, this was great. Like I said, we can talk forever. I wanted an hour. We went two, yeah, and it felt like we just started. So um, a lot of cool stuff here. And man, again, thank you because you were one of the influences to to get me to start this thing. I mean, you know, like I said, between people I was watching way back in the day, you, Cool Duder, 
flick pick. Even I'm going to throw Ryan 1988 in there. He was somebody I was watching very early on uh, as money, well. Wa- wasting money one. Don't wasting remember. money one. Remember that crew? I wonder where they what got happened? that name from. <laughs> well, wait. Didn't you work with them on some stuff? Didn't you do videos with them? I did. I did one with uh with the main guy once. We came out to ho- Hollywood and we did a video together. What happened to those guys? They, it was a couple of them, wasn't there? Yeah, like, like a few the, of them. The three of them, yeah. They just kind of went off and did their own little thing. They had a band, and you know, I mean, sometimes YouTube's not a, a like you know a lifetime thing for certain people. You know what I mean? Like there's people that come and go. There's people that were doing these kind of videos when I started that are nowhere to be seen now. You know, it's kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy how things change and shift, and other new people come in and other people go out. It's, I, it is funny. There's definitely a big resurgence now of like a new crop of people because, like I said, between you, Sean, Flick, Justin, Piz, Dead Pit, like those are the main ones I was watching. And even like you said, Wasted Money One was another channel. I totally forgot about them that I was watching on quite a regular. Yeah. Um, Zarin Eisner was it, one of them too. I think he's still around. Zarin Eisner, he's back now. He was somebody yeah. I was watching too, man. Uh, way back in the day, I loved his content, and uh, I'm not he's lie, back I, now. I'm not gonna lie. As soon as he started doing like video game like playthroughs, I'm like, oh shit, I don't care. But like, I still love the guy. Yeah, he was very early in the game, and he was a very with him though. He was so knowledgeable. Like he was the type of guy that if you wanted to learn like about like the ins and outs of things, it's like you want to listen to him. He knew his stuff. Yeah, uh, on all that stuff, he was he was super fun to watch. And, it makes and then me he has like. It makes me feel old. Makes, you see, you see his daughter now. It's like Jesus. Oh yeah, I was gonna say he used to bring his little daughter on. She must be probably like, probably almost twenty or maybe. How old do you think she is now? I haven't. I haven't. I see him in my feed still, but I haven't watched him. It's always like he'll be cooking or something now. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know either. But I remember when she was little. Now she's all like grown. I'm like Jesus. How old am I now? God dang. It is. It's wild, man. I mean, I'm. I'm just as old as you. So, uh, it's just. It's just crazy how the time just flies and. Like you said, you probably feel like you just was starting this thing not too long ago, but you've been through a lot in your journey through YouTube because you've showed everybody between, you know, where you're living, you're moving, you're, you know, with the situations with Gabe, uh, you did the, the out and about movie. Like, I mean, I have that movie. I bought it when it came out. Um, it may. It may be signed by you guys. I don't remember, but I do have the the DVD from the first one that you guys did. I, I hope it, I hope it's signed because if you want to send it to me to get signed, it's fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> now now you're charging for it. Yeah, maybe I'd have to go back and look, but I mean I loved that man when you and and that's the thing. Like I was watching you guys back then. You guys put that out. I I bought it. I bought the Dead Fit Bit documentary. Oh me too. I bought the. I bought the cool dude one that he did with a, when he traveled to, to California. I bought that. I've got that in my collection. Like, I mean, I was really into everything you guys were all doing back then. And uh, it's just so cool to, to be working with dead pit now to have you on the show. Like, I mean, Justin 19, 1988, like I know he's got a new name now called just Justin. If you guys don't know him, I've collaborated with him. I've collaborated with Piz a little bit. Like, I mean, it's just crazy to think that, I've come in and been able to like work with the people that I was watching when I was still living at home. Yeah, man. It's wild how this world it's, it's like, it seems so far, but yet there's so many possibilities like endless, Mm -hmm. right? Like, and like you said, you were watching rookie of the year and not realizing you're going to be doing videos with the kid, right? Like it's just crazy to think how, when you take action on something like the possibilities around and he, he messaged Thomas messaged me a couple of years ago said, Hey, I'm making this movie. You want to be in it? Oh, uh, you know, right. it's like, it's like, do you, you, you mind if you maybe ask, tell, ask some of your buddies if they want to come too? So I had fluffy and Luna come and my buddy Scotty, we're all we're just extras and stuff. But like, it was kind of cool to be at the Viper room in Hollywood, you know, where um, a lot of stuff happened over there at the Viper room. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it was cool, you know what I mean. To like Tom, Thomas himself is like, "Hey, I'm making this movie. You want, you want to be a part of it?" Like, yes, let's go. <laughs> and you're also part of, uh, I think so. Weren't you in Chillerama? That was a big deal back then. Well, for a second or two, if you see, like, if you like, pause it right, my fat ass in the background going like this. <laughs> I got, yeah, to, I, I got, I, that. but I got to hang out with Lynn Shea that night. You know what I mean? Like, it was the coolest thing. Like Adam Rifkin yeah. is, a, is a friend of the channel or friend of. You know, a friend, he, mm-hmm. you know, the director of, uh, you know, a, lo- a bunch of stuff from The Chase to yeah, Detroit, yeah, yeah. Detroit Rock City. He invited me to the premiere of the movie that he made called The Last Movie Star. 
And uh, I thought I thought I thought it was just gonna be like the, they were gonna show the movie. He was he was gonna do a Q and A afterwards, maybe do a video with him after or whatever. But it ended up being the premiere of the movie, and I was just I was just dressing a, a sweat you know a, you know like sweatpants and a sweatshirt like it was just like nothing. I didn't think it was gonna be a premiere. I got there, Chevy Chase is right there. They had a red carpet, and like two seconds later, Burt Reynolds comes riding up. I'm like, what's going on here? And I I was, I was like you know invited to the after party with my friend Frankie and. I got to sit on the couch and like talk to Burt Reynolds for a couple of moments. I was insane, dude. Video wise, it now didn't it didn't happen because I wasn't. I was. I was too nervous to even bust out the camera. In front no, of I, I. There was a video with Burt Reynolds. I saw it. No, no, but I'm talking about like interview, like at the. Oh, oh. Like, but, I, I, I filmed the Q and A, but like I didn't like. It wasn't like, hey, Burt, what's up, man? Oh, cheer, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, cheer. yeah. But then a couple months later, he passed away. It was like one of the coolest mm -hmm. things happens because of this YouTube shit. Right, guys. So again, if you're not subscribed to Wet Movie 1, go subscribe to him now. Like I said, he's an OG. And if I were you, I would go dig deep into his catalog and, and, and just start watching these things. Because like I said, for someone who I had only really met probably a couple of years ago when I started this thing, like, you know, we've chatted, I think, maybe on like Facebook at one point or Instagram, like just a little bullshit here and there. Yeah. But he didn't really know who I was until I started the channel and did some stuff with Deadpit. And he's been a huge supporter of me. As you can see, he's got the shirt. He's a big supporter of the Rad Pack. He's always hyping us up. He's always hyping up the Born to be Rad brand. He's a big Deadpit fan. So the fact now that it, the, the he's watching my stuff is, is incredible to me. And I'm so happy that he was, you know, so excited to be on this show. So Guys, like I said, I'm newer in the game. He's an OG. You need to make sure you go into his back catalog and watch his stuff because I feel like I've known this guy for years just watching his life through YouTube. And that's the one thing about him is that you do feel like you know everything about him because he's so open about his family and him and, and his friends and what he's up to. And it's it's a fun ride, guys. You know, and there's so much hidden gems you can find that you want to see him go to a water park, go find it. It's somewhere. You know, you want to see, like there's so much stuff in there that you, you just can find. whatever you guys do, don't dig too deep. Get my, <laughs> don't 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 get me canceled, please God. Don't don't cancel him. And if you liked this episode, feel free to share it and uh, hashtag uh, rad and wet. Wet 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 rad. <laughs> I was getting wet and rad on Sunday night. You can write that on there. We're but um, <laughs> but thank you everybody who's watching this live. I appreciate. It. We've had a lot of. We've had over seventy five people in here the whole time, which is good for this channel. Um, so I appreciate that. And and anybody who's come over from Brendan's channel, thank you guys so much. And again, if you are, if you did subscribe to me and you like this content, thank you. And make sure to subscribe also to the Rad Pack channel. Uh, where myself, Mel from My Killer Podcast, and Justin at Move Watch Daily have our podcast. And we do the video portion there, and we do live shows every month. And also, too, like I said, make sure to subscribe uh, to Wet Movie 1 if you're not, and dig deep into that catalog. And Brendan, let's see if we can get this in one take. I don't know. We didn't rehearse. Stay rad and stay positive. Fuck, I was going to say wet. Come on, man. Get with it. Hey. Stay, stay hey. rad. And stay wet.